We started this off. There was so much shit that you wanted to be like, uh, let's save it for the podcast. Facts. Wildest night in Philly. That's how we're starting it off. Um, uh, this is a good one. All right, so like before I ended up like living out in Philly for a little bit type shit, I was visiting, fucking with Sado and shit. Yo, R.P. Slime Beach, you heard? That was the spot. That was the studio. So she, she was in South Philly. And it was this gas station that I would go to, right? I was there for like a week. It was like the first time I was in Philly for like more than just a day. So I was there for a week. And on the last fucking day, we all went to the gas station. Every time I went to the gas station before that, I would be by myself. And there was this banner across from the gas station that said, I hate Satan in all capital letters, (laughs) right? On the last day, we all went to the gas station. I, I happened to be on acid. You feel me? But I'm glad everybody was there so they could vouch for what the fuck happened. First off, um, there was a, a van parked in front of the crib that said, I hate Satan. And the shit had a fuck, the craziest quote you've ever seen in your life. It said something about like, beyond, like it's, it's the end of the world and like Beyonce uses the Bible for uh, like tampons and shit. <laughs> Yo. I swear to God, I got a picture. Right, like, I wasn't with him at on, first, but I on. think we're I gonna, like We're going to flash the picture. <laughs> Like when this drop, you heard when this drop, we gonna flash the image of me like doing the doing the the, the prison pose in front of that shit with my man Wiles in front of the. Beyond. And then we go across the street, and this fucking old dude is just blasting music out his minivan, just wilding. Like it looked like his last night on earth, bro. He took out his teeth, bro. He he told me like, yo, he had like Yeezys and like G stars on, and he's like sixty five. He looked like somebody pops, like somebody that's like. I don't know if it was like work, one of what somebody, did he blasting? Like what type of from music? Like working on Diane's like uncle or some shit. <laughs> what type of music is he blasting? I got the video. Uh, count it up by J Cole. Oh, like, okay. Count it up. Count it up. Count it. Like, he's just wilding. Like he's, he's just like, trying to get some young pussy. He looked on the like street. he looked like little Uzi, like dancing. I want to rock and shit. Yo, he's trying to post yo, some so twenty two year old. We start talking to him, and my phone died. My phone died. Yo, I swear to God, this man looked me dead in my face, and he goes in the middle of the whole shit. He's like, you know who blew up the pyramids? Me, I'm the guy that your mother <laughs> warned you about. This shit was nuts. Like, and you're tripping. Like, yeah, what? I was. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Yo, I knew exactly what he was talking about. <laughs> I seen his whole life story in his eyes, yo. I was like, damn, Uncle, you gotta put the crack down, yo. <laughs> bro, yo. What a way, yeah, what a way to start this shit off. Let's go. <laughs> Yo, that's the thing. When you're tripping, the universe just throws you shit nah, that bro, you would it glitch, never It glitches, get. it glitches. It I remember one time in D.C., it was me, Uncle John. I think my man Todd Adele was there. Yo, we walk, we we crossing the street, all of us on acid, and we crossing the street talking about car accidents. Two cars just fucking smashed into each other. <laughs> and I told my men, I was like, yo, I did that shit with my mom, you heard? The first time I ever did acid, I, my friends were like, yo, let's go out to, like, fucking Marshalls or some shit. Like, what, the fuck, idea. what the fuck are we doing? Let's go boosting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I still a uh, USPA shirt. Bro, right as I'm peeking, I go Lisa outside. Nautica sucks. <laughs> I need a G-Shock right now. <laughs> I need a G-Shock from Canal Street right now. I need a G-Shock and a Calvin Klein that don't fit well. <laughs> anyway, I go outside because I'm like tripping. I'm like, I need some air. And a dude tries like to- outside ro- the marshals? Yeah. Outside in this alley and this dude tries to rob me. You almost got robbed on acid? As I'm peeking for the first time. Hey, yo, the first time you took acid, you fucking like almost got robbed in front of a marshal. Bro, I'm shit. in sweatpants. It's snowing. I'm, I literally just scream and what run a, away. What a traumatizing experience. Bro, I'm a mushroom guy through and through. I fucking love mushrooms, man. Yeah, mushrooms acid, are- like, I, I, used to, um, I used to sell acid, so I used to always have that shit. Girl. I would always have like a, like a sheet on me, at least a sheet or two. Like, I'm notoriously known for like a, being a shaman. Mm. I've gave a lot of people their first tab and shit. Okay, I want to ask you what a shaman is because I've said that on this podcast. I'm like a, sh- I'm like a, sh- I'm, like a sh- I'm like a shaman for shooters. You know what I mean? <laughs> the shaman shit? for real. I got like a. <laughs> there's quite a few like notorious like street legends. You heard that got yeah. their first tab from me, man. Yeah, and switched their whole shit up. Went vegan. 
All types of shit. You are for real. Bro, I started this podcast after a DMT trip. Swear to God. That's epic. That's fire. Like, look, now I look at what I'm I doing my, now. I got my first uh, DMT vape pen from Rome Streets. <laughs> Everyone has that same story. Shout out Rome. <laughs> he has the song. DMT yeah, he's the plug. Yeah. He's the DMT guy. What was your first trip like? What? DMT On trip. DMT? Yeah. First time you broke through and shit. First time I really like broke through... Um, I was on this, I was, I was, I was like, um, I was at this shorty college in her dorm and she was doing homework and shit. I was just on the floor. It's like ripping that shit. Right. I'm like, fuck it. We going, we going to fucking Pluto. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Pen. Yeah. So That's I'm ripping. real I'm, shit. Nah, I never smoked that shit out of a bong, yo. That you shit, kidding like, me? I heard that shit smell like know. death and shit. You know, you know it smells like you're burning tires, but that yeah, shit like, takes like, you there. Like burnt hair or some shit. Yo, yeah, that's what I heard. Bro. Yeah, that's exactly. So like, I'm I'm kind of all set with that shit, but um, I'm ripping the shit. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna break through. I'm gonna keep hitting this shit till this shit hit back. So like, I'm on my back ripping the shit. It felt like I was in an elevator, right? And you could call it like ancestors, whatever ancestral energy, whatever you want to call it. It was like a group. I got the top of the elevator. What felt like an elevator, you know what I mean? And they were like, yeah, he ready. Let him up another floor. Let him up another floor. And then when I really broke through, it was like the elevator doors open. It was just mm. lights. And then this shit got weird. This shit was like, it felt like I walked into the weird room. It was like Williamsburg. <laughs> Like a bad night in Williamsburg. And then I realized I wasn't breathing. Like, this shit, like, took my breath away. So once I started breathing again, I left the weird room. Mm. The weird Williamsburg cocaine room. How long was that? Probably, like, 10 minutes or some shit. Yeah, shit was, yeah. That shit's so that's quick. A, that's what I love about it. Because, like, once you take acid, you got to commit to it. Like, For yeah, it's an it's acid bro. day yeah. today. Like, with DMT, you go there, and you come back. And everything's back to normal. Do you, I like that shit. Do you take that shit for knowledge or for fun or but like how do you differentiate that shit? Like Yo, bro, that shit had me I I took my pack of cigarettes and threw that shit in the trash. Like, this shit had me like meditating and shit. It's just peaceful, you know? Yeah. I'm not the type to like smoke DMT and like go talk to elves and shit. That ain't my mm. that ain't my wave. <laughs> Someone called Shout out Sadu, like when I had that shit, he was like walking to the store smoking that shit with his eyes open and shit. I'm like, bro, I need to be on a couch. Comfortable, I'm my not, eyes closed. Like that motherfucker's different, bro. I'm not gonna say who, but I had a mutual. I have a friend who lost his DMT pen in an Uber. Yeah. Imagine we were talking about. Shout this out before. the elves that be taking DMT pens and shit, bro. Imagine hitting the DMT pen thinking it's the weed pen. She's gonna fuck your whole day up for your 15 whole, minutes. Bro, you're just on your way to work and then you meet God. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, whole, every particle in your fucking being is gonna start vibrating and shit. <laughs> in the, and that Uber driver is gonna be like, that don't smell like weed. I got like an older God and shit that like be smoking that shit. You know, if. If be smoking DMT and shit. That motherfucker, I, I saw him smoke that shit. I got a bowl. And then he like came back and was like, yo, I'm the one. Like, Neo. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I need parts, bro. I want, I'm, I'm low key trying to smoke the real shit. I just feel like I'm gonna smoke that shit. I'm gonna turn into Rick Rubin. Mm. I'm gonna just grow my beard out like Merlin. Nah, that shit did you change heard? my whole. That shit changed my whole shit. I'll be up. out here looking like ZZ Top. You'll start looking like me. Nah, bro. I'm talking about like long beard to the floor, like Merlin. Is that what Rick Rubin did? Start I don't know. Yeah, you got a long ass beard. Like him that's what I'm Kanye, saying. Like I feel Kanye like I'm gonna grow too. my hair out. I'm gonna look like I'm gonna look. Wow, this shit. I start smoking DMT. I'm a, I'm just walk around barefoot. <laughs> you got you got to keep that shit under control. You catch me in Lawrence like barefooted on Union Street. <laughs> that could be something else. Fraud, I, don't, I think that's your smoking that something else. <laughs> All right, crazy. I I do want to talk about. Shoot, shoot. Go ahead. All right, craziest night of your life, not just in Philly. I can't even call it, man. I probably can't even say that shit on here. <laughs> For real, I'll get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've had some wild I've had some wild ones, man. You gotta be more specific. All right. I actually I wanna hear about how the Harvard interview went. Cause you said that I got was that a shit wild selling story. mushrooms at Hempfest. <laughs> so I'm like, mushrooms, I got mushrooms, y'all. Sound like I was selling newspapers in like the thirties and shit. And this kid walking by me, he keep looking at me and shit. I'm like, yo, yo, I got him, man. It's not, it's never too late, late to be great, you heard? He keeps staring at me. He's like, yo, are you Al Davino? I'm like, yeah, I am Al Davino. Da da da. He started like 
Walking out, he's like, yo, it's cool if we take a flick, da 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 And then he spun the block on me. Yo, I must have sold like two ounces of mushrooms in like 45 minutes, bro. I sold that shit to like an old Indian couple. I was head cracking. and shit was lit. I sold out. I sold out my inventory. But like 20 minutes later, he spun the block on me and was like, yo, my man, he writes for the Harvard Crimson. So yeah, I got I got an interview in a Harvard newspaper by like selling drugs. And doing a lot of other shit. Yeah, but like not specifically. <laughs> like literally. Yeah, if like you specifically, out there. if I was not on the same corner selling <laughs> mushrooms, I probably wouldn't have got my interview. In Harvard. In the Harvard newspaper. Like, Isn't literally. that kind of crazy? It's fucking insane, bro. It's insane. Bro. Shout out Ryan. It was like some real like how ha shit. Definitely shout out Ryan, bro. Good people. I told Good people. I so he interviewed me yeah. and I told him about an experience doing DMT and then he like didn't release the article for like two months and I was like damn Harvard nicks that shit they didn't want me telling that shit but then oh, they like released it, out? it they clipped it out I mean probably Whatever. for the best probably for the best you weren't see I liked your in- your interview was like dope because I feel like people will read that from Harvard yeah. and be like it's like intellectual like you can watch this and it's wild or you can read the Harvard interview. It's crazy. It's the like, only experience I got with Harvard was like back in the day, me and my mans was, was like, my mans had like cutties at Harvard. Like, like cokeheads and shit. Yeah. Or they they to, get in, they get in the car like mad drunk, buy like an eight ball cut for like fucking 250. Those were the days. That's your only memory now of I'm Harvard? A, yeah, that's my only memory of Harvard, bro. And now I'm in the newspaper. It's lit. Buy selling drugs. And making art. Good drugs, though. Good, like, medical. Yeah, good yeah, art. yeah, yeah. That, and of good course, art. that's why I got interviewed, but I wouldn't have got the interview without the transactional, you know, activities. Yeah. Blocktivity. Do you want uh, the block to, to uh, Boston Commons and shit? <laughs> Turn that shit into the strip. Hempfest. Got what I mean? Got what I mean, y'all? Did you have a moment when it all clicked for you, like, artistically? I think it was a series of moments. It's like, you know, it's like breakthroughs, realizations, understandings, you know. Um, I can't really pinpoint an exact moment of clarity where it was like, I guess it's the moment I'm in now. I guess it's all click, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I can't really miss, whether it's with art or doing clothes or music, especially music, is like I can't miss, you know. Do you remember spitting that verse after with the uh, for Wes that night after the show at Bright Music Hall? What do you mean the joint I recorded? Yeah, yeah. That I mean, was... I haven't I haven't heard it since. Uh, my man, uh, Sheikh Hanif, he don't drink or smoke, so I like I checked in with him for like the recap of the night. You know what I mean? Because I be getting faded. We were all. He be on Dean now, nah, but he don't drink or smoke, so he remembers everything. So I was like, "Yo, yeah, I probably wrote that shit in like what, like thirty minutes." He was like, 30 minutes? You wrote that shit in 10, 15 minutes. You Listen. was done in like twenty minutes." I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that's like parallel to your recollection of it. It is. That's I exactly that, what I happened. I had that shit the fuck out, man. There's you know, a reason. I'm, there's do. a reason I'm bringing that up, but I think that's an important story because one, after that show at Brighton Music Hall, shout and that was out actually Rome my Street. beat. That's my beat. Really? Yeah. I don't really want to leak the what that beat is for, but yeah, that beat, that beat, that beat was originally on Guns of Butter. Right? So, like, me and Nack, when we was at Gun Crib, like, mixing down Peace Fly Guard and shit, you know? Like, uh, our homie Crucial the Guillotine sent us a batch that he wanted Gun to hear. And he heard this shit, and he was like, he's kind of just shrugged it off, whatever, whatever. We wasn't trying. I'm like, yo, I'll black on every single one of these joints if he ain't feeling them. So that's why I ended up doing, and then that beat ended up spinning the block. I'm like, "What's up? Let's re-rock it." And you went crazy. And I went on off that again shit. after the bet. What you considered, and I thought you killed it up there, but I remember you saying that was the best show you felt like your best performance. Arguably, yeah. At Bright Music, I was Club. mad prepared. Mm. I have like a history of like preparing for shows like mad last minute. You feel me? So like. I'm more prepared now than I've ever been for shows. I'll be having my shits locked and loaded, rehearsed, all that shit. And then we go to the studio. 
You kill that shit. We ordered like, like 12 pizzas. So much fucking Domino's, bro. A lot of Domino's, yo. That was like the leaning tower of pizza of Domino's. <laughs> bro, Domino's, we need Somebody got a pizza left, with like bro. no sauce. I don't it know who that was. cheese and bread. It was just cheese and cardboard. I was like, <laughs> bro, what the fuck? Whose you, man's is this? <laughs> you, yeah, you Who can't did be that? getting plain ass. I feel but, like I've seen Thousand Words take a slice out that box. I've never looked at him the same since. <laughs> nah, 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 I'm fucking with you, down. You know I let you, down. I was, I was, I was fucking with you. Yo, shout out to that. That's my twin. But you He's feel also it. a Sin City citizen. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Born uh, born in New York, but now he's He's a transplant. Here. You know, we, we, we took him in. We took him in. You know, that's that's... That's the guy. He really fucks with like the movement out here. He really, he really fucks with mass as a whole. So shout out Thou. Shout out Thou. He for fucks. Real. Yeah, a lot of this. He's the reason for a lot of shit right now. Absolutely. Just being able to capture all of he's it. He's a historian. For real. You know, photographer, hip hop photographers are historians. They document the history. You know, they make us important. They yeah. mu- they make us more important than we already are. You know what I mean? Yeah. So shout out them. Like that was that was arguably the hardest working man in hip hop. Oh, one hundred percent. Easy. One hundred percent. I saw it. I saw the come up. You know what I mean? Like he really bogarted his way through the door. And you gotta respect it. Shout out Thousand Words. I'm stoned as hell, but I do want to get back to the point. And again, I'm not trying to leak what the project is, whatever. Right. All I'm saying is we were all lit that night. And you came from a place of just like in ten minutes you wrote that shit early and spit it crazy early, like just black. And you probably only had to record it, uh, do two takes on that shit. early. Yeah, I'm a professional hitman, bro. You know what I mean? Like I do this shit for real. I do this shit for a living. You know what I mean? So I, I don't, especially when it come to gun. You know what I mean? Gun, give me the word. That shit is over with. That shit is consider that shit lit on fire. Yeah. I've been waiting for that shit for a long time. A lot of people know me for being the first. I was like the first person up on that shit out here. Oh, I God. put Knack on the gun back in the day. How did you first hear about him? You know what I mean? Um, an older head from from Framingham put me on the um Hus, and I heard him on uh Victims of Vogue. I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" You know? I was like, "Yo, this voice is crazy." Like I'm fucking with this. It was like Hitler Three ain't even come out yet. You know what I mean? So it was like around like Hitler too, like Nickel City Blend shit. I just was spreading the gospel, man. It was like, I've never been the type of person like, oh, you, we, you ain't up on this, da 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 Like, nah. I'd be like, yo, you need to know about this. Like, you would love this shit. Like, you know what I mean? Just spread the gospel out here, man. Like, Boston got a lot of love for gun, bro. For real. Every time we do a show out here, that should be on fire. Since the, since the jump. What was your connection to him? What do you mean? Like, why did you, why was his art different to you? Well, first of all, he, I like, he, like, really, he really like, yo, I'm going to tell you right now, like when Fly God Tracklist came out, he had A.A. Rashid on the outro. I already knew who A.A. Rashid was. Off of like Sarnetta and shit like that, like consciousness on like YouTube and shit. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? How, what? I'm like, yo, this shit don't even, and then that's a classic outro, bro. He's like, you missed the first three periods of school, man. <laughs> Art, theater, and fashion. You a theatrical performer, man. Stop fronting. That's like the gospel right there. Like, Gun is the goat. Just the way he curates everything, the beats, like the whole aura. Like, I know that voice. That voice sound like like a little fourteen year old stick up kid that sniff coke. You know what I mean? That rob you for your shit. That's what that shit sound like. If he grew up, that's what I heard when I heard that shit. It was like, hey yo, you know what I mean? That shit is just that's some back in, back in the day New York shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just a breath, breath of fresh air, you know what I mean? Because it ain't really about, like, rapping, rap shit. Even though Gun be rapping his ass off when he do, when he, when he want to, you know what I mean? But it's really just about aura, man. It just brought, like, a whole new aura, you know? Like, from the merch, the covers, everything, you know what I mean? The energy. It's just, yeah, it's immaculate. You know? It's immaculate curations. See, all right, and I'm going to But Rock see- is the godfather, you know what I mean? Rock sparked this whole shit. Without yeah. Rock Mars, they would, we're still be in a dark age. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. We in a renaissance era. You know what I mean? You're a big part of that. That's a blessing. You know what I mean? To be more than like, just like a spectator, but to be like a participant in a moment like this. is. But you dope. had to stay down. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. 
And that's what I mean. I'm going to keep going back to that point about that verse until I get to the Go point ahead. of it is in that moment you stepped up and where does that knowledge come from? Does that come from experience? Does that come from a connection to a higher power? Where does what like my, my, moment, my preparation in like that while, moment, I was, while I was ready? Yeah. Bro, I got like 50 albums. I put out like a lot of music. I've been doing, I'm only 28. You put out some crazy albums this year. Exactly. A number of albums that are all fantastic. Thank you. You know what I mean? So I like, I do this shit for real. That's that. It's like I've been, pra- I've been it's like Goku in the fucking hyperbolic time chamber with the with the weights on and all that shit. You know what I mean? That's been me f- for moments like that. You know what I mean? My my gun go off, man. I'll be ready. What kept you down? What kept you going? Keep it a buck, bro. I kind of came in the game kind of like sanctioned, bro. You know? I came in the game with some significant people. You know what I mean? People know what it is, so I don't. I don't really gotta give it airtime and all that shit. People know what it is, man. I kind of came in the game on some like, yo, since my first shit. But since my my first shit was crazy, my Davino edition one is crazy. Yeah. To this day, people still fucking with. It's like five, six years ago. You know, so I've been doing this shit for a minute. I don't know. I can't really call it doggy. Yeah. It's just you know. I'm the one. Yeah. That's it. You know, and that's what the knowledge is—is is knowing that shit. I don't think that shit. I know that shit. Yeah. Can't nobody see me. I don't care what it is. You heard? Like I don't really be talking my shit like that. Like I'm gonna keep it a buck from the flows. Like, man, I've made a lot of people step their shit up. Me and Nack, you heard? We kind of like shifted this whole shit. You know what I mean? From the way we t- we took the flow off the grid. You know what I mean? We we came with like an unquantized flow that a lot of people got, like either bit or got inspired by. Some people pay homage. Some people act like they never got nothing from nobody. You heard? But how you feel about that? I don't give a fuck. Just pay me, man. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I, you- to me, like I just like it feels good to to influence people. You know what I mean? To inspire people to be better. You heard? So I can't be mad at that shit. Yeah. But you just it feels know. good. Like it make me feel valuable. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, we really put a put a mark in this shit. You know what I mean? We really left our our footprint in this shit. And this shit ain't going nowhere. Never. She's gonna always, you know what I mean? We on the Mount Rushmore shit. How I see it. Can't leave out Nack and Davino. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you're it's been also a crazy saying- run. You know what I mean? We've had a crazy run. This shit is is far from over. But earlier you were saying that right now is when you feel like this is your moment. Like, this Cause is the, the cause, moment. Yeah, because it's the present. You know what I mean? There's no better moment than now. Mm. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how I see it. Like, I, don't ro- I don't romanticize the past. Yeah, you can't live in it. That's like a human... That's like an innate human nature type of thing that humans tend to do is, like, romanticize history and shit. Like, oh, my God, like... When I was a kid, it was the shit. Like, no, it wasn't, bro. Like, you couldn't do nothing. <laughs> you couldn't, you had no freedom, you heard? Yeah. You forget that part, you know what I mean? You forget about your mom's blacking on you for not coming home early, you know what I mean? You forget about, oh, my God, I wish I was, no, you don't. Yeah. Oh, my God, I wish I was born in the 50s. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Those are people Wasn't no Wi-Fi? <laughs> this shit was fucked up in the 50s, man. What the fuck? Everyone was just dancing. To oh, I want to work in a factory music. as like a fourteen-year-old. Like, bro, what the fuck are you smoking? I'm like, yo, what fuck is bugging? But yeah, people like to romanticize history and shit. I like to live it in the moment, mm. in the present. You feel me? Yeah, and that's what keeps you going. Just making so much, like, absolutely. You are, you do put out crazy amounts of music under different names too. Yeah, like. yeah. I, I at one point I had to like divide it up. It was like this is Al Davino, this is CVV Vino. I mean, this is like contemporary. Well, they're, they're both, Al Davino ain't boom bap. It's not like 90s music, you know what I mean? But it's, CVV is more like contemporary to me. You know what I mean? It's more like contemporary music. It's like, yo, I do that shit for my, for my people, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I did the Al Davino shit for years. I, I'm still doing that clearly, but like, I do that shit for me. You ever wake up and have one of those days that you just wish there was someone there to talk to or a way to just figure something out that you can't in your life. And unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual like that. But 
there are things to help you out, like BetterHelp. BetterHelp has therapists that are trained to help you figure out your challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has helped 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, accessible anywhere, and 100% online. Everyone deserves to feel their best. BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. All the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, more accessible, and more affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. It's there, right for you, right there. So get unstuck with better help. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Bucked Up. That's BetterHelp, E-H-E-L-P dot com slash Bucked Up, B-U-C-K-E-D-U-P. Make sure to get the help that you need with BetterHelp. Let's get back into it. You know, like I made like 30 albums for myself. I didn't really care if anybody fucked with that shit. I like it. But, like, my CVV shit, that shit is for my hood. That's for my little homies. That's for for my people, you heard? Yeah. I just see a void. Like, in, like, Massachusetts music, there's it's just still a void of, like, wavy shit. So I'm like, motherfuckers be, was thinking I was 30, bro, when I was, like, 26. <laughs> I had, like, a midlife crisis. I fucking took a gel tab at Grey Matter Crib from uh, Muni Academy. I was in Richmond. I just had like a fucking, it was like a revelation, bro. I was like, bro, everybody thinks I'm like 30. I'm like 26. I'm outside. Like, this got to change. Like, if I'm going to do it, I got to do it now. I can't be 30 trying to make new shit, like wavy shit, like trying to like doing drill music at 33 and shit. I don't know. That's just not my wave. You know what I mean? I'm like, nah, I got to do this shit now. Yeah. Because like. I feel like people was trying to box me in as not being in a box. You feel me? Mm-hmm. It was like, yo, Vino is like, the Vino is uh, uh, experimental street music. You know what I mean? Like bugged out music. Da, da, da. I'm like, they was trying to put me in that box, I feel like. So I'm like, you know, you know what? Y'all can't do this, and y'all definitely can't do what I'm about to do. Y'all can't do both. Y'all can barely do one. You know what I mean? You like, how we rap like this, but we can we can switch it up. And and this shit ain't Michael Jordan playing baseball. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this shit's really wavy. This shit really like that. You know what I mean? Like, I got hits on nah, the CVV shit. That's how I see it. It's like, yo, he got classics and he make hits? And it's not, like, watered down, like, mainstream shit? It's not like, it's not like I'm making, like, Jack Harlow type music, bro. You know what I mean? I'm still, it's bangers, though. It's like, yo, I got shit. But you see it as two separate things. Two separate things. Do you see that one? But it's two sides of the same coin, though. Yeah. Because they're both Davino. It's just two different sides. People don't, didn't really get to see how multi-dimensional I am. Like, for the most part, bro, I'll be listening to R&B at the crib. I like 90s R&B and 80s R&B and shit. You know what I mean? Oh, I've been been going back. I don't really listen to a lot of rap, bro. Like, and when I do, I'm not really listening to, like, rapidly rap shit, bro. I'm listening to, like, new shit. Cool yeah. shit. Like like that shit we were listening to before? Uh, that's, yeah. All that shit from, like, V's and, like, Babyface Ray. Yeah. All that Grinch shit, like, Shawnee Bin Laden, Diora. You hear Icewear's new album? Ice Lord? Icewear Vezo? Nah. Nah, I fuck with Vezo, though. That shit's crazy. That new He's album hard. you put on. What? All that shit, bro. I like all that shit. I like that shit a lot more than rapidly rap shit. Like, I do that shit to such a degree that it's like a lot of that shit just doesn't impress me. You enjoy it still? Making that type of shit? I like doing it with Knack. That's when I have the most fun, doing that type of music. Why? Because it's just fun. Like, me and Knack always have fun. This shit ain't never been like a serious thing. Like, it's never been too serious. Yeah. 
we've always just been bugging out. We just bug out in the studio. You heard? And we we say shit out loud, and then that shit goes into the verse. You know what I mean? Yeah. Motherfuckers that say like armadillo do rag or some shit. That shit might end up with like an armadillo full body do rag, and you might hear that shit in the verse. <laughs> You heard like all types of shit like that, like in both of our shits. Like he might say something and end up in my verse. I might say something and end up in his. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We bite from each other all the time. It's the best. I love Nack. That's but like it's my, fun that's when like you're my doing twin. it with him. And we ten years apart. Not a lot of people understand that shit. Like me and Nack are ten years apart. How old are you? Twenty eight. All right. You know what I mean? And we got chemistry like that. Yeah. And I know him for I know him for ten years. I've known him since I was seventeen. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we've been family out the gate. Like, I got, like, taken in by, like, a Dominican family while I was younger type shit. And, like, their family is mixed, is, like, mixed in with Mac family. You heard? Like, mm-hmm. went to high school together, all that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a lot of ties. Like, this ain't no rap shit. We didn't meet through rap. You know? Like, oh, we're going to rap together. Like, nah, bro, that was my mans. Yeah. I, like, he, like, took me in type shit. I used to... Damn near live at his crib for like years before we ever made a song. Did he know you rapped and did you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. He thought I was super nice when I was 17. You heard? He was like, the first thing he ever told me was like, all right, so we met at uh, Michelangelo crib. He used to go by Mass Appeal back in the day. Shout out Michelangelo. Mikey! <laughs> Fucking scumbag. I love Mikey. That's my guy. <laughs> but, um, what's it called? So, like, Knack was whipping like a um a Benz SUV at the time. We we pull up to to Mikey crib, and then um he had to go like bust a move or whatever. So he was only there for like thirty minutes. But I left my bag in the back seat type shit. And while I'm grabbing my bag out the back seat, he's like, "Yo," he looks at me. He's like, turn, he turns around to driver's seat. He's like, "Yo, don't ever let nobody tell you you're not great." And that shit, that shit always stuck with me. That shit, like, changed my life. You know what I mean? Nobody ever talked to me like that. You know? And really just, it's like the first thing I remember him ever telling me. Yeah. Type shit was like, yo, don't ever let nobody tell you that you not great. Like, you ill. You know what I mean? That shit meant a lot. You knew, and now we here. You said you didn't know it before that no one ever talked to you like that. Doesn't mean I didn't know it. But no one, you didn't. Nobody get ever that. talked to me like that. That yeah. shit was like affirm- It was like affirmation. You know what yeah. I mean, it was like a like a like a confirmation. You know what I mean? Of like, oh shit. You know what I mean? But it's just interesting when you look at our age dynamic. We ten years apart, but how we like two sides of the same coin. Like how we like got the type of chemistry that we got. It's like bridging a generation gap. That's how I look at it. What like, do you think it is? What do you think your connection is? It's interesting, bro. We knew each other for years, and we found out our mother got the same birthday. Facts. I never, t- I never told that shit on a platform before. For real, oh, yeah. our, our names are a letter off. All that shit. We you got think- a lot. We got a lot of synchronicities. Like you think it's both our mothers shit. can notarize a document. They got the same birthday, and they both are notaries. It's interesting shit, man. It's just like, yeah. I don't know. I can't really call it. You think you know shit's I mean? predetermined? It's just fate. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the Destiny. Destiny. You ever heard Destiny? No. That's that's uh uh EP that me and Nag did. Yeah. That's a lot of people's favorite shit. De- do you think shit's predetermined though? I think it's both. I feel like shit is predetermined to a to a degree, but I do feel like feel like I got like control over my narrative. You know what I mean? I don't really feel like some mystery in the sky, like Got it all figured out. Mm-hmm. Like it's still in the air because anything could change. Change is the most constant aspect of life. If not the only like consistent aspect of reality is change. So it's like if everything's constantly changing, then is anything predetermined? Yeah. It's a good question. I can't really call it. I don't got the answer, Sway. <laughs> you ever go actually skiing? This motherfucker off the hook, right? Yo, that was crazy. I went snowboarding. I went snowboarding when I was younger. I ain't never went skiing for real. You heard? I, I, have, I have jumped out the helicopter on skis a couple times in my life. 
You know I, I mean? love skiing, and I was about to say, we got to go skiing. <laughs> Not on the podcast. <laughs> we ain't going skiing on the podcast. Hey, yo. <laughs> on this episode of Winter Olympics. <laughs> or, yo, we should start our own Winter Olympics. That'd be hard. That'd be hard. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be pole vaulting in Arctic climates. Um, ecstasy games. Facts. I got an Air Max 95 e pill in my cupboard right now. If you want to see it? <laughs> That's it's like, shaped like an Air Max 95. Yo, you got to put, that that put that in a museum. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't even want to take it. I only got one. You know what I mean? I'm going to give that shit to my grandchildren. And like, <laughs> like yo, put this in a glass case. Yeah. This is culture. This is culture as fun. <laughs> you should forget like a football case that they have. Like, Sam, this, is, this is good already. This is a good one already. On we don't got time limit either, bro. You want you want you you in my living room right now. We can rock. I really am in your living room. We're you smoking. Are. You got the fucking peace flag art. Just I like do. not even. It's not even the first artwork in the stack. Yeah, <laughs> you got that shit. Yeah, behind. It's like it's my child. I know what my child looks like. I don't, shit don't need to be in my face all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I stared at that shit for like two months. It's like a problem child. I got to send that shit to gun, but I'm like, yo, it's just like sending my kid to college. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. like fuck. You get connected to your art like Hell that? yeah. It's all like right. you get to connected to your child? Like, of course I do. Like, it's <laughs> <Yeah>. like... <laughs> Shit damn near came from my nuts. You know what I mean? Yo, I not hope, really. I hope not. Yeah, I would hope not too. You know what I, I mean? I, but you, yeah. get, you, get, you get what you I'm saying. You just fucking finish on a painting every day. <laughs> Yo, throw him down the stairs. Yo, you're out of here. Yo, we bought an Uncle we bought an Uncle Phil Jazzy Jeff you out the Yo. fucking crib. Out of pocket. Yo. Oh, my you Start God. breaking out the black light. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Yo, it's like a Motel 6 up in this bitch. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. That's crazy. Yo, this motherfucker's off the hook. Oh, man. But, yeah, I definitely get connected to my artwork, man. Like, it's like, but at the same time, I got to, like, let go. You know, I, re- I can't get, like, too attached to it. You know what I mean? Do you get more connected to your paintings than your music? Yes. Absolutely. Because I like music. I don't even hold on to music. I just put that shit out. That's like, what I mean, bro. I don't, I don't be announcing shit. I damn near never announce shit except, like, Triple Black Diamonds 2. That was, like, we announced. We did, like, a rollout for that. But I usually don't do rollouts. I'll be like, nah. Do you like that I'm people just like drop. your shit? Sam, that's a weird question. What do you mean? Do you I know like, what I mean. Do I like All right. that people like my shit? What do you I mean? Cr- I create my shit, and it's almost weird oh, that I, people listen to it. If like, they like I it or not? I'm just doing it for myself, so it's weird that people like it. Like, I'm I don't just think doing it's weird it. that people like it, because I, I love my shit. I make my shit for me at the end of the day. You know what I mean? I don't make my music for other people, so if people like it, it's like, it says a lot about them. All right. You know, it's like, okay, because this shit ain't for everybody. You know what I mean? Everything is not for everybody. You know what I mean? So, if you like it, it says a lot about you. You know what I mean? That's how I see it. I always always try to, like, keep my shit a secret as much as I could. That's what I mean. That's why yeah. I asked, do you like, like people like that shit? shit. Bodie Rock, look, he oh, tell me all the time, he's like, bro, you like an iPhone. I want everybody to have this iPhone. Like, But you don't want that. I don't. You want to be like a once cyber everybody, truck. Once everybody know about some shit, that shit get played out. Mm. That's what happened with everything. Snapbacks, G Shocks, sneakers, Supreme, Bait, everything, man. Polo. Mm. Way motherfuckers wear polo make me not even want to wear my shit. Y'all just make this shit corny. You know what I mean? I don't want nobody to corny my shit up. When it becomes a you business. Know? What do you mean? When it becomes my shit's a business. My shit's already a business. Yes, it's a business. All right, but how about a dope-ass restaurant? Let's think about the dopest restaurant in Boston. That's never going to sell as well as McDonald's. McDonald's is corny as fuck. It doesn't mean I don't want to sell out my shows, though. That's what Loki Wild made CVV shit. You know what I mean? Because CVV shit is more like this shit could pop. You know, this is more like palatable. You know, it's like Al Davino is like a gourmet dish. You know what I mean? It's like a $300 plate, and there's like barely anything on it. You know what I mean? Mm. But it's just, it's, it's plated well. You know what I mean? It's like a luxurious presentation. Do you, you know see I mean? those as two separate people in your mind? No. Like I said, it's two sides of the same coin. Mm-hmm. It's like heads and tails isn't separate. It's just two sides. It's two sides of the same coin. How do you go about creating one versus the other? Just I don't like write being? my CVV shit. 
Like I don't like I just punch in. So it's not it's it's more like art to me. Cause it's less like the less thinking I gotta do, the less contrived it is to me. The more I gotta sit there, that's why I write quick. I don't like sitting there and writing. The longer it takes me to write, the more I don't wanna do it. But you know don't I mean? you think that's why shit gets played out? Because so many people just sit and have to think with the idea instead thought, of the original thing that gets put thought out. Thought strangles intention. It suffocates intention. So the more you overthinking it, the more you're overcooking the food. You're overseasoning the food. You're overcooking it. Now it's burnt. Why want to eat that shit? You know? It don't take a lot to make a grilled cheese, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's not rocket science. You know what I mean? Making a sandwich is not that difficult of a task. You know what I mean? I just look at it like making a fucking sandwich. It's like, all right. You know, bread, sauce, meat, cheese. Do you simple. stay you as with having fun? What you mean? Like, you don't, if you don't think, if you just have fun, then it's always enjoyable. It doesn't become like a chore to create. The Al Davino shit did become like a chore, kind of. Kind of. It's because it's, it's, I don't know, man, like, I really feel like I pushed the boundaries of this shit. Like, I reinvented the wheel, like, multiple times to me. You know what I mean? Like, on some, like, I really, like, what more can I do with this? Like. Yeah. I already kicked, like, the illest shit you could possibly, like, imagine. It's like, how much? But I just keep getting better to me. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I feel like the less I do that, like, I mostly do CVV shit now. So it's like. When I do do Al Davino shit, I'm like, I'm coming with, coming in with like a fresh head, like a, cl- like a clean, like my mind is clear. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not like play, it's not like redundant. Where it's did, like a fresh thought. That's what I'm saying. It's like a fresh thought. Where did CVV come from? Um, It's funny. It was uh, Grey Matter and Monday Night. And while I'm peeking. I didn't even know Monday night was coming through. This motherfucker, Grey Matter, had me blasted in his crib, and then just like Monday night just comes through. I'm like, bro, I wasn't really expecting like a like a another factor. You know what I mean? Like, I fuck with Monday night, but I don't really know something like that. I'm like, bro, my face is melting off right now. I'm like sweating. The AC's on. I'm sweating. They said some shit like, like CVV Davino. Like if I was like a scam a scam rapper. And I shortened it. I was like, CVV Vino. I had to sit down at a table by myself and just like repeat that shit in my mind for like 30 minutes. And I'm like, am I bugging or is this the illest shit I've ever thought of in my life? And it, it was. It was pretty fire. Pretty fire idea. I just CV- like how that shit looked. Like that shit just looked cool to me. And like CVV is like the the three, the three digit number on the back of a card type shit. Yeah. Would you want to put... So I look, at, I look at, like, the Al Davino shit is like... It's like buying a gold brick. It's like a physical, tangible... It's like a Rolex. You know what I mean? It's like a, a physical, tangible item that increases in value over time. Like the vinyl. CVV is like crypto. That's like my crypto. You know? That's the best way I could describe it. Yeah. And would you push it? To the limit? And push it to the limit. What are you talking about, Sam? <laughs> would you push it to the mainstream? Would you? Would I can't. You... you know what I mean? It's like it, if it hits, it hits. But it's like I don't I don't push nothing to the mainstream. I don't. Whoever's supposed to. I just want fly bitches to hear my shit and the little homies that get fresh and get money to fuck with it. That's it. What's your, what to you? I don't need your... all the lames to fuck with it. Yeah. The, the mainstream is like the lame stream to me. You heard? That was off the cuff right there. That's brand. That's a brand. That's a fresh thought. Nah, on some real shit. Because the it's, lame stream. You it's heard? lowest common denominator. For everyone to like it, it has to be lowest it's like a common person. denominator. Like, like, if you need everybody to like you, I probably don't like you. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I never gave a fuck if people like me. You know what I mean? It's like, you know what I mean? Is what if you like it? All right, if not go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I don't like. People that want to please everybody and let's like, like people that's too nice. You ever met somebody that's like too nice, like Logic or some shit? <laughs> I've never met Logic. I don't trust no. Logic. I feel like he's like a fucking like a cannibal, like a closet cannibal or some shit. Like mm. some, he looked like Jeffrey Dahmer to me. Like uh, no. I'm talking shit. I'm talking shit. No, that means 
You know what? And I'm I just a, don't trust people that's too nice. And it's like it's like that. Like you know what I mean? The mainstream is like they're like, I'm a, it's just played out. It's like, yeah. do, do I do want your clothes and in, in Marshalls? You saw, hey, I'm a break, I'm breaking interview to, uh, we're still staying on, but no, nah, that's some real shit on like you talking about my comedy and even posting that's crazy when I post, because like for me, that shit isn't likable. Like no one's going to like me for the shit I post like joke was, you know what I mean? I don't like, know, bro, that kind of made me like you, bro. But that's like what Like the I'm school saying. shooter joke yeah. made me like you. I was like, I like this guy. This guy's fucking funny because I study <laughs> comedy like. I study stand up like I love that shit like mm. like Martin Lawrence, Dave Chappelle, like, uh, Charlie Murphy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm a big like I love comedy like that's my shit. Like, my dad's favorite movie growing funny. up was Chappelle's Block Party, and that makes it's sense for like shit. why I'm who I am. You know what I mean, bro? Like, the food like Chappelle when he did the food bro. with Common and Kanye <laughs> walked in the crib. Uh, like what? Yo, Dave Chappelle is one of the illest human beings of all time. Rap and comedy do have a lot of similarities, though. Absolutely. Like, to me, like, Chappelle showed me what comedy is really about. And it's alchemy. It's alchemy. It's taking something that's not funny and making it fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. It's alchemy. You know what I mean? So there's definitely elements. You know what I mean? There's common elements, like, for real. It's one person... My, one person controlling the minds of a, a group. You know what I realized about comedy? You remember the event, the Mauricio shit? Remember? You didn't you didn't go? They they had this shit in Lawrence. It was like this event. It had like a like a box. They put a boxing ring in the shit. It was like stand up, like local stand up, fucking boxing ring and she was nuts it was an art gallery and she was nuts right this kid went up there trying to do comedy and at that moment I realized the one factor that will fuck up a comedy show and that's not telling everybody to shut the fuck up if that shit is not dead silent you are going to bomb oh like, absolutely a hundred like yo I'm looking at this motherfucker. I'm like, yo, this is so cringeworthy right now. I'm like, yeah. everybody's just talking over your shit. I'm like, yo, the only way stand up will work is if everybody shuts the fuck up. Then it's like the joke's going to land and shit, but. You can't be timid. This The room can't be, I'm talking about the room was loud. No, yeah. Like, it's like he's not even there. No, but he's you like can't trying be timid to going up. up. You have to go up Hell and control. No, man. You yeah, have to you control gotta own the room. And that's You gotta lot... tell them to shut the fuck up. Isn't like, that listen, very shut the similar fuck up. to fucking rap in the way that, all right, no one's gonna pay attention nah, until you start. it's kind of the opposite. Start. Like, I don't, re like, they yeah. gotta scream constantly. <laughs> it's like the complete opposite for me, but it's like yin yang, I would imagine, like. All right, I guess it's different. I hate when, like, crowds don't, like, have a brain aneurysm, like. Mm. Just fucking short circuit. Let's go full retard in the crowd. You heard? That's no. all I want. I that shit make me want to bite somebody's face off when it gets lit. It's I go like, crazy in crowds. I love that shit. Like, I got to do more shows, man. I'm, I low key start doing the CVV shit for shows, too. That would be crazy. Don't you have yeah, like a like, secret I want, show I want coming a, up? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that shit about to be in a basement, bro. In Roxbury. I'm pulling up to that. Bro, shit. projector, all that shit. Shit about to be a vibe. Like, See, because somewhere along the line, like, hip-hop started in the party. And at some point, the shit split. You got the party, and then you got the rap show. I'm trying to bring that shit back to one thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, have it be a party and a show. Mm. You know what I mean? Do you remember your first, like, amazing show you saw? Because I'm, I'm sick of these, like, rap, rap shows, bro. Oh, yeah. This shit is not fun. It's not fun. Everyone's just standing there like this. Everybody's just sitting there like in their B-boy stance and shit with not their fucking me mug shit. and shit. I'm like, bro, I want mosh pits. I want a crowd a surf. I want to throw gonna, water. Bro. I want to wild out. You can, like, move your body and it's like And I'm up there bit. rapping my ass off. I'm yeah. about to fall Go out. Go mosh with someone. Go I'm about to fall out on, on, with the CVV you. shit. Yeah, I can just no. play the song and just dub my shit up. You know what I mean? I don't even got to say all the words. Bro, I saw Hoodrich Pablo one count 20 grand and just drink, <laughs> just sip while his music played. And that was a dope ass He got concert. paid for that shit. That shit is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some crazy concerts. I like turning up at that shit. Bro, it's so lit. Dolph was the last 
pre-quarantine concert I ever went to. For real? Dolphin Gluck. Yeah, House of Blues. That shit was crazy. What are you looking for? Paper. Oh. I got this one, but this is like dead. Best show. Do you enjoy going to concerts? Like seeing live music still? Not really, bro. Kind of. It depends who it is. But I'm really not trying to go to a rap show unless I'm getting paid. For real. Yeah. I did that shit when I was younger. That yeah. shit was lit when I was younger. But now I'm grown. And it's like, I don't know. Not, not really something like high up on my list. Mm-hmm. Do you have nah, any- I'd, rather, I'd rather go kick it with a bitch. <laughs> there's no bitches there. There's no bitches at these at rap a Grizzel, shows. At a Griselda's <laughs> Nah, Griselda's shit, I'm going. Nah, that's different. No, I just mean there's no bitches that's different. at underground rap. Not under, you know what I mean. Like, Yeah, that's what I'm is. saying. That's why I do CVV shit. You know what I mean? Because I, like, I got more bitches fucking with that shit than any of my Aldo Yeah, shit. they love that they shit. Love, I got bitches putting me in their close friends with their titties out with my music playing. <laughs> This shit is so lit. Like I'm like, this is life. This is like, this is what I deserve. And it just came to you randomly. <laughs> Kinda, like, it, yeah. it, like I always been into wavy shit. You know what I mean? I always yeah. been into like, I always listen to trap music since like Walker Walker Flocka. Yeah, you know what I mean? All that shit. Flocka, Flocka Valley Karma was the shit. Like freshman year of high school, like you know, all that shit. Travis Scott when he first came out, all that shit. Like, Bro. The, the list goes on. You know what I mean? Fucking Travis Scott. I don't Scott just listen to. Tried to fuck my girlfriend at the House of Blues when I was sixteen. That's how you know old. you got a good one. Was she sixteen? She was seventeen. Jesus Christ! Jailbait. <laughs> Jailbait. <laughs> bim, 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 bim. What? He was opening up for Juicy J. I've had quite a few rappers <laughs> try to fuck my bitches. That's how I. But that just comes with the shit. That just that comes does, with the shit. That does come. Motherfuckers want to rap like you, dress like you, fuck the same bitches. You. I think that means I could fuck so Kylie Jenner though. Get my fucking nuts out your mouth. I'll fuck. I'll put another baby in. <laughs> you said what? I'll put another baby. in. You about to take his bitch? <laughs> Let's go, Sam. I, I endorse you. <laughs> yeah, I, I support you. Fucked up's about to be the next Oprah. Put the, I'm put taking the, that money. Put the Sith Lord hoodie on like Kermit. <laughs> Bro, Caitlyn's gonna be my villain. co-host. <laughs> we might really gotta throw you down the stairs, bro. <laughs> That's a, that's uh, a long way down, you heard? That's a, that should be spiraling uh, like this. That's a, uh, my stairs spiral like you right now. You're spiraling out of control. So how was your first time snowboarding? I ain't shit. It hurts way. I would imagine it hurts way more falling on a snowboard than it does skiing. Not skiing, your legs get all tangled up and shit. Snowboard, you're like, it's just one entity. I don't oh, know, really? bro, but you could, like, fall on your side and shit. You could, like, when, oh, like, your fucking, both of your feet are, like, locked into a board. And then when you fall, you just roll. Like, you just, like, you just take a tumble. Yeah. I would, where did you go? Wachusett? Some some stupid shit like that, bro. I don't yeah. fucking know. <laughs> How long ago was this? <laughs> long time ago, bro. I probably didn't even have hair on my nuts. <laughs> oh, you were young. Yeah, guys. I was young more. Oh, young more. Oh, all right. See, I would be so. Nah, it's a it's a lot like a lot of spliffs ago, like a lot of weed ago. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. You ever think about that? The, the quantity of weed you've smoked all the time. Like I'll be hoping I'll a- be hoping that like when I die. And I'll go to the other realm or whatever, whatever you want to call it, that there's like a little midget. And he's just like with a typewriter. And he just like documented everything. Like he knows exactly how, like the Akashic Records or whatever. You <laughs> yeah. heard? Like also like when you get to the Akashic Records, it's like a little, like a little Harry Potter, little elf, a little elf that pop, popped up in his room. I imagine you would look like that. And he's just like, he got a book, right? And he's like, you... You got had this many times. You had this many slices of pizza. <laughs> you smoked this many cigarettes. <laughs> this this many bottles of tequila. How I many, hope, ta- how many I tabs? I hope so, you bro. Because I put up fucking numbers. What? Easily a hundred. Easily a hundred tabs. <laughs> Easily. I never did like a lot of acid in one sitting. I saw someone take fifteen tabs, and they were never my little the sister same took a the- took a ten pack. Took a ten tab, ten tabs of ash. She didn't, she didn't tell me for like t- like two years. It's my little sister. She made me feel wild pussy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Bro, she ended up quitting cigarettes and medication. She's in law school now, man. <laughs> because of a yeah, while well, I was like still like ten piece, still, I was still bugging out. I'm a like, fucking, damn, do I need a ten piece of acid and just like hallucinate right quick? <laughs> you gotta take that pill that's in your last throat. time I took acid was with Starker out Zumo crib. Oh, uh, <laughs> that shit was wild as fuck. See, yeah, that shit was lit though. We was doing graffiti on napkins and shit. We felt mad old, bro. We felt like we had been talking about graffiti since like the pyramids. <laughs> and you know the dude who destroyed the pyramids. Nah, he said he he built them. Oh, he said he built them? I thought he said he ex- blew them up. Oh, something. he did say he destroyed them. Nah, he definitely... <laughs> he said he blew them up. Yeah. How'd that shit come to... I mean, not to change, but like... Yeah, right, go ahead. Like, how'd the Peace Fly God cover shit come together with the art and actually like that piece itself? We did five pieces for gun. And one day, I had Stalker come out here. Um, So before that, you ever seen the Secrets cover? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the first painting we did. You heard? Mm. When I was living in Lynn, we did that shit in, in uh, the parking lot of my apartment building. We had Frank the Butcher pull up. That was the first time I met Frank the Butcher. That was dope. He, like, he copped a Montex tee off me and like watched us do the painting. So like when we first did that painting, we tried to sell it to Gun. He wanted all four pieces. He wanted the front, the back, and the alternative cover. And um, he asked, like, the price. I gave him the price, but, like, I, like, sent it through, like, a voice memo. He'd be bad busy. So I don't think he ever heard that shit. So he just, like, forgot about it. And then he spun the block. Two years later, like, a couple months. So, like, he spun the block two years later type shit. Trying to, he's like, yo, what's up with this pen? You ever did anything with it? I told him it was an album cover and shit. And I was actually, he didn't, I guess he didn't know it was a collab. But I told him, like, yo, I made it with my mans. Da, da, da. So this is the number, like, two years ago. So when he spun the block again, he's like, I don't want y'all to cook up. I want to, like, the, the character is Bimbo. It's actually uh, Betty Boop's dog. A lot of people think it's Mickey Mouse, but it's not Mickey Mouse. It's Betty Boop's dog, Bimbo, right? With the fez on. So, like. Gun calls us. We on the phone for like an hour. And before we even did the paintings, he's like, yo, talking crazy. You know how Gun talk crazy, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, shit, all right. Let's lock in. So we did all five in one day, but we knew that was the one. We knew he was going to pick that one. Why? Because it said Peace Flock out on it, one. And then two, it was just, it looked like the one. It looked like the cover, you know what I mean? It's like, he got to pick this one. What does that character mean, Betty Boop's dog? Bimbo? Um, I gonna speak on it too much because that's stalker shit. You know what I mean? Okay. But um, I I like introduce him to knowledge itself and shit like that. So I definitely had like an influence yeah. on why he got a fez on type shit. Like he wasn't hip to like the Moors and shit like that. I don't know if you know who the Moors are. Yeah. In history, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they brought chess to Europe, soap to Europe. They like brought Europe out of the dark ages type shit. So, um, yeah, there was a, a old black and white episode called uh, Bimbo's Initiation. You heard? I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going I'm to let Stalker finish All right. that He's shit coming on soon, so Perfect. I'm going to ask him that. Perfect. Yeah, I ain't going, you know. Nah, I'm going to leave you with that, with that little... It's funny crumbs. that you knew A.A. Rashid before any of that Yeah, shit. bro. Shout out. He's yeah, bro. I've known A.A., bro, for, for some years, bro. I, I bought his book super early, bro. That's still I wasn't even most... getting money like that. I saved up my $100. And I bought that book just so I could be in, in touch with him. Really? Yeah, bro. Hell yeah. That's like really my, that's like my brother, bro. For real. That's like actually like. My man's for real. That ain't no, no rap shit. That's for real. AA is one of my favorite people that I've of met. All time, Dude, bro. He, show, he showed me he, so much love bro, in LA. He, like. I, that's how I first heard about you. He said, my man's, he's a comedian, da da da. I didn't even really put two and two together till later on. Mm. Facts. He's the, he, told, he told me about you first. That episode's still my most viewed episode. More than like Conway. Well, West, the AA. A, a Rashid is one of the illest human beings I've ever met in my life. One of the nicest. Beautiful Smartest, person, bro. Yeah, just speaking knowledge, like, For real. and you have to listen to his shit. Like, it's kind of like your shit. Like, all right, I'll listen to either CVV or whatever. Bro, the one dog time. food title track is one of my favorite songs of all time. Could you fool a fool? <laughs> that whole album. People shit don't even amazing, realize bro. he can spit as well as he does. He sent me bro. that album before it came out. 
For real? Yeah. yeah. So that's how you met him. You saved up and bought one of his books. Yeah, I bought the first one. I was hip hop. Crazy. I was like 22. Wow. How'd you find out about him? Sonetta. So uh, it was a YouTube channel on uh on like some consciousness type mm-hmm. type time. You know what I mean? SD introduced you to that shit. Now? Nah, bro. Yeah. Nah. You just found out on your own. I found it on my own. Yeah, yeah. no. I wasn't sure of the knowledge. I was in all from. that shit, man. I've yeah. always been like a, you know, just in the shit. I used to skip school and go to the library. Mm. When I, after I got knowledge of self, like when I was 17 type shit, I used to skip school. I used to steal books. For real. There's people who want to learn and people For who don't. A. Rashid, his, like, his whole like, he like a library of information and experience, bro. He's like really old New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he might be one person, but he's a um what's the word I would use? Like he's like a collection of shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's the representation for a lot of people that ain't here no more. That's how I look at it. Like that's why I love when you tell me stories and all that shit. You know what I mean? Like I love when my OGs tell me about like back in the day and this and that, da da da. It's just like a time machine, you feel me? That's the important part. So I was just talking to the someone me, about me this and yesterday. Me and acid quite a few times, bro. Oh my, my god! I yeah. did. I've see, I've already done. about my acid, bro. I had him tweaking <laughs> that bug spot, bro. I've I, done I, some I, mushrooms with him, and we went to bro. He brought us to oh, the vegan yeah. restaurant in L.A. This like fancy ass vegan restaurant. We're all tweaking off the shrooms. My, that that motherfucker had me eating arugula and shit. <laughs> Literally, bro. He's with s- drunk eating like arugula. He's and splitting shit. blunts, and there's like all these like L.A. Nut, vegans bro. all around us. He's too. arguably one of the funniest people I ever met in my life. You know who Bruiser Wolf is? Is that the one with the shades? He does have shades. The but glasses? Yeah. He's a crazy... He kind of rap like on that like Detroit, Detroit shit. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I fuck with son, man. I heard he fuck with me too. That's what Lucas told me. Yeah, he does. All right, so yeah. Through so Lucas. holler at me. I'll do a joint with Bruce Wolf, man. Him and fucking AA guy. Man, I, I love introduced- Danny Brown, man. Like, you got to understand, like, I was listening to Danny Brown in high school when he had cornrows and was break. He had a fiend breaking down copper pipes in his kitchen and shit. I'm like, this motherfucker is crazy. No, he's a he's fucking. He's one of the he's best. A legend. Yeah. Shout out Danny Brown, bro. I don't think he gets enough flowers. Definitely his, not. Nah, he's Definitely so influential not. to so many fucking people. And this whole, it's funny because Benny, Benny was telling me this, but Danny Brown's the whole reason Griselda got signed. He's the person who showed Rosenberg. Like, I'm not surprised at all. Benny was telling me this whole story. Like, I'm not surprised at all. Danny found them, kind of. Yeah. Crazy shit. Crazy yeah. shit. I remember I remember Benny told me like two weeks before they made that announcement that they really? were signing the Shady. Yeah. He wanted me to like uh, send some beats to his man's like, uh, I think it was Love Boat. Yeah, Love Boat Luciano. He ended up getting locked up or some shit. Yeah, he's out now. I, I recorded an episode with him and we lost it. Oh, shit, for real? Yeah, I've lost like, yeah. Yeah. I, my computer crashed. I lost him. I lost a Rick Hyde episode. That's crazy. What you ever lose music? Lose a hard drive? Lose what? You know how many fucking laptops crashed on me, bro? Like that's the thing. Like I'm actually a producer. Like I'm on some like I started making beats before I started rapping, bro. Mm. I've been making beats for a long time, but I don't really got a lot to show. Yeah, I got mad beats, but like you should see how many beats I've lost. I've lost like at least eighty percent of the beats I've made in my life. Like I had crazy shit, bro. That just ended up. It's a I got some of them laptops, so I'm gonna try to bring them shits back to life one day. Everything you make, do you release it at some point, or do you keep yeah. shit? For the most part, other than beats, I hoard beats. I don't email beats. I, I hate the thought of sending somebody a beat through email. It's like they could neglect it. They could like forget they have it and then use it one day, and like I ended up using it. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't like this beat. Send another one. It's like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Fuck that. I'd rather just cook it up in person and then they leave with it. Yeah. Type shit. All right. Final question. That's it? That's it? We've gone over an hour. We could go longer, man. All right. I don't. I what didn't know. Fuck? We can keep Sam, going. you just going to fold on me? I'm not folding. I'll you go, folding I'll like keep... a napkin, bro. He's like, all right. <laughs> You're going to go down the stairs. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm just getting started, bro. <laughs> it's an early night. All right. I didn't even roll up yet. Yeah, all right. Let's take a roll. I need to roll up, You know up who's too. the first person that told me I needed a podcast? Who? My commie. 
Really? Oh, I feel like when you I first met him. I feel like you would be a, have a good podcast. You just tell him crazy stories. The first fucking person that told me, he was like, "Yo." So yeah, that's always been in the back of my head. Like this shit don't work out. Start a podcast. Start a podcast, bro. <laughs> hey, you should. You can do it at the same time. Except nah, I ain't even gonna name names. But sometimes I see people with podcasts. Nah, bro. I'm not doing that shit till I'm like in my thirties. That's a million dollars worth of game shit. Yeah, like. Once like Davino's kind of like flat soda, like musically, <laughs> if that day ever comes. Are you staying in I'm going to start talking shit. I mean, yeah, bro, yeah. Until something, an opportunity presents itself, but you know. I'm cool being home, man. I spent years road running, bro. Everybody know me, man. I'm a fucking Greyhound legend, bro. I really pulled, there's only, I could count on one hand how many rappers pulled up to here. But I pulled up to everybody hood. More than once. More than once or twice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've been to D.C. like 12 times. I've been to New York 300,000 times. All right. Times. You asked me more specific, but nobody come out here. of your you know life. Only a couple people came out here, like Stalker, uh, Raheem, Fast Life. What's your craziest story it. on a bus? <sighs> Oof. There's a couple ones. Like the one Don't time, get yourself was, in trouble. Like, like, no, nah, of course not. Of course not. Like, there was one time I ran into a model. I'm, like, walking down, like, the aisle of the bus. I see a model, right? I'm like, yo, anybody sitting here? She was like, nah. Sat down. We ended up watching Attack on Titan together. Or... Is you know she really are. a model if she's riding She's a, a model bus? and a photographer, bro. She's like, yeah. Like, Ankh knew, her, Ankh knew her and all that shit. It was like... See, if you're a model random. and on your bus, you go from Mad a 10 random. to a 7. I think she was off like a Zan or something. She like fell asleep. <laughs> I like snapped a flick of her. She was like... She was hilarious. <laughs> I still got that shit somewhere in my phone. I never told her. I never told her I had that shit. <laughs> Maybe she's listening. <laughs> no, nah, she's fire. Oh, uh, number one... Is she I'll fire fucking, on a um, bus, though? Sam, if I say she's fire, she's fire, bro. You understand? Yeah. You get me, bruv? You get me, bruv? I get you. Um, The other one, I'll probably have to say, like, I took a bus from Philly to Atlanta with no headphones. Like, 14-hour bus ride, bro. Yeah, no headphones. I'd rather jump off that bus. And I think I was on acid. I did plenty of bus trips with, like, no headphones on acid. You got to be really, like... Mental. You ever like trip mentally on a plane? Strong. Yeah. See, I'm scared to trip yeah. on a plane. If you scared, go to fucking church, Sam. <laughs> Get a dog. <laughs> See, I just don't want to be... Who con- cares? Like, I mean... I popped my first perk like three weeks ago before I got on a plane. <laughs> That's a I, little I different had, like, had, like, than on a fucking... I had like this conversational threesome with like a white girl and an old lady. <laughs> I was right in the middle. And we was just like... <laughs> it's like this. It's like this. It was great. It was great. I felt like mashed potatoes. I was like, oh, this is what they be talking you about. You felt like mashed. Yeah, like garlic, <laughs> garlic mashed potatoes. <laughs> like a Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, whipped, whipped to perfection. <laughs> Old people Pause. are real hit or miss. Yeah, she had she had a good heart. Old people are real hit or miss. You meet someone, you're like, oh, you should. God's almost done with you. You should. Yeah, uh, some old people is like, man, hope you fall down the stairs today yeah. and break your fucking hip. I have to ask you the question: Would you rather fight a crocodile or a bear? See, these are the type of questions that. How the fuck you was gonna end the interview without asking me some shit like this? That was the final question. I was that was really ask. the final question. Nah, really this is the first question. <laughs> this has gotta be the first. Yo, you gotta come out the gate swinging, bro. A bear or an alligator? Yeah. I'm gonna probably go with the alligator, bro. Even though, like, being in the water and shit, like, or like on land, would it be on land or in water? You fight the bear. In nah, the nah, water. nah, 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 nah. Oh, that's what you're saying. That's you fight saying? the bear in the water, the alligator Hell on land. No, man. <laughs> Bears are some of the scariest shits I ever seen in my life. Like, yo, you see that new movie, Cocaine Bear? That's coming. Yo, out? I heard about that movie. I haven't seen the trailer though. It's about a bear that eats like a pound of cocaine. And just starts fucking. I know. I know a couple up. people. I know a couple people like that. <laughs> Some bears. 
Nah, nah. <laughs> Hanging out in P-Town too long. Straight Bear Grylls, Bear Grylls vibe. <laughs> Shout out Bear Grylls. All right, now let me ask you a question. All right. Would you rather die by Megalodon or Giant Squid? Mm, Megalodon. Why? You know, you know how many teeth they got? You know how many teeth a shark got? Do you? Do you? No, I don't. It's like 300 <laughs> on average, right? So if a Megalodon, they say that shit is like as big as like a middle school. You heard? Yeah. So if a shark is as big as a middle school, do you know how big their fucking teeth are? It would be like seven feet. It's like 300 y'all That's like one nah, bite. Here's the thing. One you bite, you're die. dead. Nah, you're not going to die when he bites one you. One bite, you're dead. No. No, you're going to die before he bites How's you. How's the squid killing you? You heard? You're not hearing me, Sam. You're going to die before he bites you. As soon as you see him smile, you're going to have a fucking heart attack immediately. How's the squid? Yeah, I'd rather. How's the squid killing you? Bro, they got tentacles and claws on their tentacles, and circle of teeth. Like, that shit is terrible, bro. It's like the, and you're in the bottom of the ocean. It's just triple darkness. Like, which one do you, scariest which shit. Um, do you pick? I bro, choose I'd rather dot. fucking chew aluminum foil, bro. I'd rather, uh, there's so many things I'd rather <laughs> you do. You asked me the question. I know. You got to answer. I don't got the answers, bro. If you could have any I pet, got the what questions. would it be? <laughs> huh? If you could have any animal as a pet and it wouldn't kill you, what would it be? It's a good fucking question. Um, probably a sloth. I fuck with sloths. I've watched like Animal Planet of like sloths swimming on acid before. It was like one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. You ever seen the video? I can't of, believe like, I haven't leaned back in this couch like the whole time. Like I'm just getting comfortable. <laughs> I know we're an hour ten in, and you're just getting. I'm comfortable. just getting comfortable. We got the real interview out of the way, and hey, now, now we can, we can just talk fun. shit. Now, now we can have we, fun. Yeah. He can start talking shit. Yeah, I love how you were going to talk the whole time, and then you're like, I might just sit here quietly, and that's what you did. You know, he's he's the he's the the MVP of the RHL League. You heard? The RHL League ruined her life. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the Wayne Gretzky of the RHL, you heard? I want to hear some apple times you ruin some bitches The lives. apple doesn't fall far from the tree, you heard? <laughs> Yo. He, uh, he upping it. He upping it. Nah. So I got caught some bitch sucking my dick on the Mayflower once. I heard you talk about this. <laughs> I did <laughs> heard you talk about this, yo. That's a legendary story. <laughs> I ruined. She never. She can never learn about history I got, now. <laughs> I got head on. Um, like a college shuttle bus. What like while she's driving. <laughs> Wait, she's driving the bus? Yeah, like not like she wasn't even a college student. She was no, just a bus no, lady. No, <laughs> bro. Like the bus is being the shuttle is being driven while I'm getting oh, locked oh, up in the oh, back. Oh, I thought you were yeah. fucking the bus lady. I was in the back seat just getting my dick sucked on a shuttle bus. Like she was crazy. Like while they drop off students and shit. <laughs> wow, I'm just they... getting my dick sucked in the back. That she was lit. <laughs> All East, right, now Easton College. East, East, Easton in Pennsylvania. Now we got to hear some. You got to speak up and tell some yeah, real come on, come on. stories. <laughs> come on, pick up the mic. Talk your shit. Talk your shit, Frankie. Yo, this motherfucking Lex Diamonds. <laughs> Feel me? I'm out here. I don't know, bro. I don't know where to start. Like, it's. A lot of Ask him some thought provoking shit. He, he going to hit you with the craziest. I just want to hear what story he mentioned. Come through. Oh, he dev got the story. Something he happened shy. in Jersey. He getting camera shots. Bro, we're an hour into the interview, ain't nobody watching this far, bro. You can just get, you can get loose. <laughs> it's not for real, though. Not for real. Like, <laughs> I feel like for us, they gonna sit and watch this whole thing. Mm, they I probably do worry. This shit is lit. This I shit do is worry. I lit. do worry about like, yo. Oh my god, I I had a chick. We fucked, and then she asked me to share her music right after. You dub that shit? Dub that shit. I she can't rap be fucking she we, sings? She was a singer. You want a feature? I can get you one for a dick suck. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I make bitches quit their what, job. She, like she sucked my dick Wait. and <laughs> Wait, what? I make bitches quit their jobs and buy me shiny shit. I, yo, one time, one time my dick made a bitch quit Olive Garden. <laughs> Like from she eating did. Olive Garden or No like she worked at Olive Garden oh. And she woke up And she was like You fucked me so good I'm gonna quit my job I thought you meant It smelled like lasagna Or I some shit God. She's like I can never eat Olive Garden again Nah that bitch was bad <laughs> Yeah 
So you said sloth for shout the out, animal. Shout out sloth, sloth for the animal you pick. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> saw that right. <laughs> Stupid bitch. <laughs> it's like my first ex. What the fuck? Yo, no cap though. When you was talking about the bear, the alligator, all I could think about is, do I want a new carpet or do I want some shoes and a boat? talk to the mic? You feel me? You got like, talking to the mic, Frankie. Mic check, y'all hear me? There we go. Uh, run if that you back, got, run a, that if back, you run got back. a million dollar check, what would be the first big purchase you blow? Oh shit. Um, yeah, what you doing with a million dollar check? Definitely, definitely getting a bigger gun. <laughs> a bigger gun. I'll probably buy a brick for the hood. A house for my mom. And an ignorant amount of clothes. Everybody and then I would buy like money. I would buy like a whole bunch of shit I could make money with. I'll buy like an embroidery machine and all that, all types of cool shit. Yeah. How about you? Shit, a whole bunch of chains. Everybody, everybody gets so many teeth. chains. I thought my neck broke. Who has the best chains in the game? Sauce Walker. Oh man, hands down. You got like, like fucking ever or right now. We can do ever. Stick Rick. Mm. Mike Jones. Mike who? <laughs> Mike Jones. That big ass shit he had. That shit. That's all I could think of. That shit was hard. The big big ass chain, right? Yeah. It said big ass chain, right? Yeah. You ever Classic. meet Slick Rick? I wish. He's like one of the coolest people ever to me. I did like a painting <laughs> of him recently. Would you do you get starstruck by anybody? Nah. nah. You know who my graduate, my high school graduation speaker was? John Cena. What the fuck? He's from Massachusetts. Yeah. From like West Newbury or some shit. Yeah. Fuck John Cena. <laughs> What's your beef I can with- see you, bro. What's your beef with John I can Cena? See you. you can't see me, though. <laughs> can you smell what the rock's cooking, though? John Cena, you fell off. You was the man. When I was younger, <laughs> when I was a kid, you was ill. Now you a fucking cornball and a rock. Fuck the rock. Fuck the rock. <laughs> Fuck the rock. Fuck um Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> what? Ryan Ryan Reynolds can eat a bag of baby dicks. You fucked up Deadpool. Like Deadpool was the shit. Like as a comic. Oh yeah. And then he just turned it into like some weird fufu fugazi shit. All comics it's are like that fanook. now though. All superhero shit too. Yeah, they like... turn it into some fanook shit. It's fanuclear. Yeah. <laughs> But nuclear is crazy. That's a new one. <laughs> Things are being created and invented as we speak. No, nah, yeah. they do ruin all the good shit with the fucking, like the comic book shit. It's like, I don't even care about any of that I just feel like movies shit. suck now. Legit, what? I don't want, yeah. I like horror movies. You seen the new te- uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre shit? I had the director on my podcast. Oh, you dead ass? Like the new new one? Yeah, the one on Bro, Netflix. That was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. I love that one. <laughs> Shout out. That shit was so bad. It was funny. Like I did have the it director was so on the podcast. I watched that shit with Lenny. You heard? I watched that shit with Lenny. That shit was yeah. terrible, bro. I was like, they are just running this shit into That's the That's hilarious ground. that you brought that one up, though. That's crazy. I ain't going to speak on I hope, it. I, I hope he watches this interview. I ain't going to speak on it. Fuck you, Frankie. I introduced him to RJ Payne, fucked Pain, up a though. classic. <laughs> you ever seen Terrifier? Nah. Oh, ter- do you- I like old flicks. I like old horror movies Do you like gore? Shit. Nah, it's not really my thing. Mm. Yeah, I do look right? like I, I look like I, yeah. It's the comedy thing. I like that type of shit. I like like the Shining. <laughs> okay, like the that's Shining a is a one. classic. Stanley Kubrick. Would you ever direct a film? Oh, you were talking about Hell a film yeah, idea, bro. Yo, you should talk about that film. Nah, I can't. Nah, 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 nah. You shouldn't. But we would. You already gave him the gun shit. You can't give him anything, Sam. I didn't give him the gun shit. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. We didn't say what it was from. Exactly. But I'm just saying like. So that's something I really want to do, bro. I'm really like a film buff. Like all my videos, I co-edit all them shits. You know what I mean? Like especially with the CVV shit. Like Asasino, Asasino, I spent, I sat in that in the in the sessions for like three days straight. You know what I mean? Till that mm-hmm. shit looked exactly how I wanted that shit to look. Yeah. You know what I mean? That shit really be a lot of me behind them videos. You heard? Like I really, really want know how I want my shit to look. So I'm like, I really, really want to do a movie, man. Like I would love to do a short film, but. What I really want to do is animation. I want to mm. I want to curate animation. I just feel like 
like Adult Swim and shit like that. It's all the same genre of humor, which is cool. Like it's cool. Like, but add some variety. It's all this like new age Brooklyn corporate cokehead humor to me. You know what I mean? It's all it's all this highbrow. Like, okay, we get it. You know what I mean? But why is it all got to be the same shit? You know what I mean? Where's the hood shit? Where is the boardroom of just people from from the street with a budget? It don't even got to be a high budget, bro. We just need animators. The hood needs animation. Like, the closest shit we had was the boondocks, and that was the illest shit ever. You know what I mean? Yeah. That shit is, like, racist to me. Like, the only way they give people from the streets any type of, like, animation shit, it got to be run through this filter. It got to be run through their filter in order for it to come out. What do you Shout think? out Dead Hippie from Florida. He's one of illest. He's like an ill ass animator. He'd be making like three six mafia type music and shit, like Memphis type shit. What about animation is so important? Why is it important to me? Yeah. Um, I just love that shit, man. That shit is like, man, like visual, like. Or why do you think it's hand important drawn, to like the- hand drawn animation is some of the most like visually gratifying shit, especially when I'm like tripping. Like, I'm, like, the king of, like, watching shit on mute while I listen to music. Like, bro, I used to take... I used to take Mushrooms and, like, I would listen to Iron Man by Ghostface front to back while I would watch 1964 Iron Man cartoons on mute. Like, and it would just, like... It would aesthetically synchronize on, like, multi... Like, multi-dimensionally synchronize. Like, it really looks like how it sounds. And it sounds like how it looks. You don't have any animated music videos, do you? I did animate a cartoon for Vanguard, my label. I With Dead Hippie, it's fucking nuts. I'm gonna have to check that this one. shit out. is nuts. That Twin shit... Mattresses. Twin mattresses, you heard? Once you see it, you, you, you'll get it. Yeah. Frankie! <laughs> But you, what's why is animation now then important to, like, like you saying there, uh, Boondocks is the only one. It's like everybody can watch it. Like a kid can watch it, and an adult can watch it. It's like something we can sh- we can share. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, for example, like Ralph Bakshi, like Ralph Bakshi was a an adult animator from the eighties. He was from Brownsville. Like the same city, Sean Price, Mike Tyson, all that shit. The Jewish dude from Brownsville, he did like Fritz the Cat. Oh, I don't know okay. if you've ever seen yeah. that shit. Mm-hmm. Heavy traffic, super classics, you know what I mean? Like he really like, his like intern ended up making Ren and Stimpy, all that shit. Like he's a legend, you know what I mean? He's actually still alive. Like that's somebody I really, really, really want to meet one day. He's like, Definitely a big influence or inspiration for, like, me wanting to do cartoons. I just, like, there's such a void, bro. Like, I see the void. Like, that's why I make music. That's why I make art. That's why I make clothes. I see a void, and it's, like, like, like a hole in between the the, uh, the hockey goalie's feet. I'm just trying to take the shot. You know what I mean? I just see an opening. You know what I mean? It's, it's just a big opening for, sh- for this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is it hard to focus when you have all the... Like like having multiple crafts? Yeah, having all... Like, all you're doing so much shit, you know? It don't feel like it, though. It's just all... It all feels like the same thing. It's just in a different form. For real. You know what I mean? It's like water. It's like the whole Bruce Lee shit. Like, be like water. Like, water is still water, whether it's in your body or in a lake or in a Pyrex pot cooking crack. You know what I mean? It's all the same shit. It's still water. Ice is still water. You know what I mean? But it's just a different form. So I just look at art like water. Different forms. Yeah. That's just, yeah. yeah that's all. Fucking Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid is still water. <laughs> Sugar water. Sugar water purple. What's your favorite fucked up food? Like fast food? Yeah. McDonald's. I'll fuck up some McDonald's. Bro, my or, my I order at McDonald's, McDonald's is man. disgusting. It's disgusting. I used to think I was above McDonald's. I used to I used to think like I was dating this chick. She was like, man, like health conscious. And like she had me thinking like McDonald's was like beneath me for a long time. I was like, I'm not gonna stoop to that level. We broke up. Nah, McDonald's. Someone now said- I'm like, that's like, bro, it hit eleven o'clock and I'm hungry, bro. What's your order? Two cheeseburger meal, large fries, a coke, and like a six piece of nuggets and i'm all set no filet fish 
Fuck no, man. I look like, yo, that's like sociopathic selections. <laughs> it's a big thing. People either, all right, do you get the M&M or the like Oreo? It's like a Rorschach test. It's like a psychological defining trait. See, I already, he you, already do said. Do you eat filet of fish from McDonald's? See, he already said I look like I like gore. And I feel like if I say I like filet yeah, of fish, didn't he's going to he be just like, guess that you shit. look like you, you look like you like filet of fish. <laughs> <laughs> I do give off the filet of fish. You do, vibe. You do <laughs> got filet of fish. You got kind of filet of fishy. Yeah, you got kind of filet of fishy a little bit. I did. With cheese. <laughs> With the, yo. With cheese. Oh, man. They call that the Union Street special. <laughs> and there's a Union Street and then there's a Union Street and then in Lawrence. What's the best so. food in Ma- in Boston? I love pizza. I I arguably think that like Boston or Massachusetts, we got some of the best pizza in the world. Like San Tapio's, Yankees and Revere. You heard? Even fucking Pizzeria Regina. You go to like the real restaurant, that shit is busting. But um, what's your, what's I like your Jamaican. I'm a, I like I like cheese pizza, man. Like, I'm a pizza snob. Like I love pizza. You heard? But I don't need nothing on there. I mean, when I'm in Philly, I get like the like the turkey pepperoni, like the beef pepperoni and shit. That shit is lit. Shout out Philly for having them type of options. You can also like go to a Chinese food spot in Philly, like get a black and mild and orange chicken. See, Chinese food, when I'm fucked you up, You ever been I to a Chinese, Chinese food, food spot in Philly where they got new ports and black and mouths and shit? <laughs> yeah. That shit is fucking crazy. <laughs> they don't give a fuck, though. They don't give a fuck, bro. They'll serve you dog in a fucking a jazz black and mild. <laughs> Yo, the there was bag. an Asian restaurant in my city that got shut down for selling I watch, that I watch wasn't. too many Facebook videos. I don't like Chinese food. <laughs> I do love Chinese food. I nah, can't I like do it, it in New York. Songs. Like, she got to be mad official. Do you like Shut the fuck up! Do you like New York City? I love New York City, man. And New York City loves me. New York City arguably loves me more than Massachusetts. Mm. That's what Bodie Rock realized when he went out there. It was like, oh, shit. Like, Nack and DeFino is lit out here. Like, people know what time it is in New York. Like, a lot of people appreciate me in New York. They Why do you think that super is? super heavy. I don't know. I think it's because, like, it's a different type of vibe. Like, Massachusetts, we got characters, bro. Like, we really got a lot of characters out here. Like, I can't front, like, from the fiends to, like, regular people. From a fiend to an old white lady is, like, yo. Craziest fiends are in Austin, Texas, though. Oh, uh, I don't know. I've never been to Austin, Texas, so yo, I can't say that, that. I was just down there doing a bunch of shows. That shit was, they were wilding down there. I love fiend culture. <laughs> I'm, like, real proud of our fiends, so it's like... Methadone like, What the fuck, kid? What's going on, dude? <laughs> yeah, I'm they fucking, do have the accent. I'm fucking they coming do down, Frankie. Accent. You know? It's like, I'll be thinking, I'm like, damn, y'all motherfuckers really wake up and go to sleep and just hear yourself talk like that all day. Mm. Like, what the fuck? Like, I don't all think my, all my, all my aunts on my mother's side all pronounce fuck like fuck. What oh, they the sound fuck? like Marge Simpson's fucking sisters. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. just like that. I, that was perfect. That was perfect. <laughs> you did a good impression of it. I feel like you could do voiceover for the like animation. That That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> you I, do need a cartoon. I curated. Fuck the, a podcast. Get a cartoon. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like if the cartoons and the music and the art shit don't work out, then I'm gonna I'm gonna get on my Noriega shit and just like <laughs> that's your last. I swear to God, last resort. I swear to God, last I'm gonna be resort. so lit. I'm gonna be so lit. I'm gonna take your job, Sam. Yo, you want to be the host of the fucked up podcast? We can we can figure something out. You know, let me get, let me get your EBT card. <laughs> we gonna, we can work something out. All right, and maybe that that singing bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll play it. I'll play it. <laughs> Have a hit at high notes for real. <laughs> Yo, man, <laughs> shout out you, shorty. I hope she's not listening to this. Yo, yo, you grab my soda and my and my drink out the shit. Yo, actually, I do want to end You're not up. done, right? I'm going to tell you a crazy right. story. What's up? I did had a comedy show up in New Hampshire the other day. And uh, this dude liked my set so much, he stole my phone. What? So he had to see me again. Yeah. I didn't and realize that, this the, at the time. And a water bottle with the lean in it. Bro, 
he steals my phone. So I finally get his number, and I'm like, from a friend, I'm calling the fucking phone. And he gives me the address. I'm giving him benefit of the doubt at this point. Hold on, run that back. <laughs> you said you had a you had a comedy show. You I liked your set so much. He stole my phone. He stole your phone. He stole my. This literally happened last week. What you do when you found him, Did you, bro? You put hands and feet on this motherfucker, man. I pull up to his place with a friend. This dude has a pulls out an. And M6. how did he steal your phone? It was just sitting on the table, and he swiped it when he was you leaving. Fucking lie. You fucking got. He caught you lacking, bro. He did catch me lacking. You got to be more aware of your surroundings. I was... I was <laughs> Trust me. I know now. Yo, this I dude was... I what you one. smoking. <laughs> bro, I'm at a table. <laughs> it was like, all right, at a show, it was a fan. You know what I mean? It was... I was lacking. I was lacking. I was lacking. I pull people up... Get, yo, people get stabbed for less. You heard, Sam? Continue. I got my phone back. He took the case off it, though. I was so mad. Bro. Oh, he's trying to, he tried to like, paint the bike that he stole type shit? Nah, bro. He uh, pulled oh, a, he oh pulled nah, a, you had a case on it. Y'all didn't steal your phone. Bro, he pulled an M16 on us because he thought we were drug dealers setting him up. That's how much he was tweaking, bro. Bro, he pulled an M16 Swear on you after God. he stole your phone? Swear to God. Bro, you live you live a wild life, And my it wasn't boy. even on you anything. You this? And this was after a comedy show. In New Hampshire? In New Hampshire, That's bro. New Hampshire That's shit. So, I, yeah, that, you know how, lo- how close Lawrence is to New Hampshire? <laughs> yeah, bro, it's a people, Manchester People shit. walk to oh, New Hampshire for cigarettes from Lawrence. You heard? Manchester's crazy. Motherfuckers are walk to New Hampshire from Lawrence. It's like a 30 minute walk just to get cigarettes for like half off. People don't realize me, that New bro. Hampshire's crazy as hell. New Hampshire's crazy as shit, bro. Except you can't be smoked. They don't like it's live for your diet, but they don't like weed up there. Mother- yeah, motherfuckers like heroin. <laughs> yeah, why smoke weed? I know, I know that for a fact. <laughs> yeah, why smoke weed when you're shooting like heroin? <laughs> He'd be like, Frankie, let me get nine fingers. <laughs> It's crazy, yeah, because then people will... You have to go get your fucking menthol up there because they don't sell yeah. flavors down here. I mean... I mean... You just got to know somebody, bro. I don't smoke cigarettes. Yeah, you just got to know a Chino, know an Oc, you heard? He'll get you right, man. I'm just under the counter. You just got to talk to him nice. All I do is smoke weed. Like, I don't smoke You any. don't smoke dust? <laughs> so I, I mean, swore I, I seen you dust it out. <laughs> on occasion. Back on in 2006, you had like... All right. You had wild sweatbands and headbands on. All right. Looking I was like, wearing three, I, like I was wearing three headbands. It was <laughs> You had you had the what's the and one shoes on. <laughs> never. You'd never catch me in some and one. Denver nugget jeans you never on. catch Yeah, you had the Devin <laughs> Nugget jeans on with and one sneakers, man, sweatbands and wristbands just dusted out. Just dusted the fuck out on Broadway. Uh, never the nuggets and never no and one. <laughs> You ever wear you ever wear yourself Swoosh. some hand ones? You said what? You ever wear yourself some hand ones? Of course, man. I was a child at one time, bro. <laughs> Were you? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to believe, right? It's hard to believe. I thought you came out with a fucking yeah, Newport in yeah, your mouth Newport. and a tab on your tongue. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and a full beard. I will tell you though that my first picture, my first picture out the womb, I had like an immaculate boxing stance and a mean mug. <laughs> And my mother put that shit on a mug, on a coffee mug. She put the mean mug on a mug. That should be some merch. No, boy, it really could, bro. I remember when I posted that shit. It was like in 2016. Hey, Rashid, just comment. It says, or it says on the caption, it's like looking like I got beef from my past life. And then hey, a, a, Rashid's just like legend in all capital letters, like five years ago. That's why I knew I was a legend. Like a, a Rashid, sound a legend because of my first picture. I got to be a legend, you know? <laughs> Yo. What okay. type of kid were you? That's a good question. Um, I've been in the graffiti for a long time. I was, like, real in the graffiti since, like, third grade. I was, I was into, like, skateboarding culture. I like, like, um, I was real into, like, classic rock and shit. I used to listen to, like, Pink Floyd and, like, Black Sabbath and, like, Led Zeppelin and shit. My pops would be on all that shit. Um, I was definitely always bugged. I was always funny, man. You know what I mean? I was like the fat kid that was like funny enough to get bitches mm. type shit. Were you fat fat? I wasn't like fat fat. Like, not like Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> but I was like, I was a little uh, gravitationally challenged, you know? Were you creatively inclined? Yeah. Yeah. You think you were born with that? A little bit. I used to not think I was artistic. I used to like I didn't look at myself as creative. I thought I thought of myself like 
I don't know. I didn't really. It wasn't until like I started taking like psychedelics. I was like, it made me realize how creative I actually am. I was like, oh shit! Like, I'm not an artist because I took art classes and shit. I'm an art. I'm an artist because of my lens on life, how I look at shit. I just look at shit differently. I see things that people don't see. You know, that's what the was best your way. I could. First experience with psychedelics. Um, probably mushrooms. I'll tell you about a, the one like bad trip I had. It was like the first time I took a three and a half. I took like a 30 milligram like time release Adderall earlier that day. <laughs> like a fucking idiot. You heard? Like a pop, like an Addy earlier that day. And it's like the strong joint. Like that's like the strong. I'm good. I'm going to roll up in a few. Fucking... That's like the strongest fucking Adderall. Like, that's like the 30. That's the 30 milligram. Yeah, like, that's the 30. The 30. You heard? So that's just busting. All that shit's I'm like, though. yeah, I'm going to just take mushrooms too, right? Terrible idea. Fucking horrible idea. You heard? So, like, I took a whole three and a half. I had taken, I had taken like a gram before, like How two old grams. I'm like 17. And, like, I'm, like, up the block from my crib in Revere at the time. I live, like, right off Broadway. And, like, I'm with these two kids from school. I went to, like, Seacoast senior year. That was, like, an alternative school. Like, everybody that got kicked out. I never got kicked out of Revere High, but, like, my grades was all fucked up. So I was, like, at that point, I was skipping school every day. I was, like, I was like fuck school. So, like, I go to my man's crib. But it's not really my mans like that. You know, I don't really know them like that. I went to four different high schools and shit. So, like, I I know them from school, but I don't know them, know them. I don't really be hanging out with them like that. It's like, these two kids, they're funny, though. They're, like, funny as shit. So we take the we take the mushrooms. I want to go outside and smoke a cigarette because the Adderall still kicking my ass. So we, 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 they're like, oh, fuck it. Let's take a walk then. We take a walk. We get to Broadway. I'm smoking my bogey and I realized they're both on the phone separately. They're like both separately on the phone. And at that moment, I was like, I'm out of here. I don't like this vibe. Nah. I was like, yo, I'm going to catch y'all later. I walked to my crib and I died. I died. I felt like I was in a grave. I felt like I was like in the six feet in the dirt. It was like an ego death for real. That's like, that shit made me not really like, kind of like eliminated my fear of like mortality. Really? Yeah. I'm yeah. not really, yeah. It's, it's hard to put fear in my heart, bro. Because mm, of that Except moment. heights. The the most shook knack ever seen me in my life, well, in the years of knowing me, was uh, we was in Miami for his birthday. We did the special effects video and the We Don't Slip video. at the, at the the well, We rented out like a mansion for his birthday. And there was like a fucking ladder in the garage. And they fought, I climbed the ladder and like sat on a ledge. For the, vi- for the video and I was so shook bro It was like half of my ass Was on the ledge I'm like 11 feet in the air Would you ever go in a helicopter? Probably uh, Only if I'm like Jumping out that shit You'd go skydiving? I'd probably shit? go sky- My little sister went skydiving The one that took 10 times her ass <laughs> Bro She should be making me Feel wild pussy yeah, yeah she's super gangster bro Yo, She's just a straight up G You ain't get me started man Bro I could never We are, we are mother's children I could never skydive you said you didn't think you were creative before psychedelics. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. I think- kind of want to elaborate more on that. That's yeah. kind of interesting. I don't know. I, my man's like, I would look like my best friend, like growing up type shit. I looked at him as the artistic one. Like he would try to draw on shit. I was just into graffiti. I didn't look at graffiti as art. What'd you look at as it? Outlet? Graffiti. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm talking breaking, like I'm nice. Rules. I'm yeah. nice. Like I'm not. I'm not like a fly by night graffiti writer. You heard? Like I really been doing this shit since I was a kid, you know what I mean? Like watching war doc the war documentaries one through four, uh state your name, piece by piece. The list goes on, man. You know what I mean? Like so when I say I write graffiti, I really I really do everything from hairstyles, throw ups, burners, everything, characters, all that shit. You know what I mean? So like when I say I didn't look at it like art, we just looked at art like it was corny. You know what I mean? Like I looked at Basquiat and like Futura and all that shit is like who look like selling out. Now I look at them as like legends. You know what I mean? I didn't understand art. You know what I mean? I had no like context of art. 
You know what I mean? I never took an art class. I never knew anybody that was in the art. It wasn't until like hearing like Gun talk about that shit and hearing AA Rashid talk about art and shit. You know what I mean? In in length, you know what I mean? Like in full detail. That shit really changed my perspective on shit. Cause being from the hood, bro, like we don't look at art like something that we should value. We don't. A lot of people look at that shit like some white people shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not knowing that Picasso stole his whole style from Africa, from tribal masks. You know what I mean? That shit is bugged out. Like it's like when little do you know, like if you're if you're the illest shooter in your hood, if he would just pick up a paintbrush, like he might be one of the greatest artists to ever do this shit. If he would just put half the energy he put in this, into putting in work into something constructive, he'd change. He'd not only change his life. And the people around him, he would also change the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because life imitates art and art imitates life. So, like, how the fuck somebody from Williamsburg going to tell me about life? I hate to keep saying Williamsburg is just like a, a general. <laughs> it's like not even a real place. It's like a type of person. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. hipster shit. Like, how the fuck is a hipster going to tell me about life? You don't know what the fuck life is. You going to tell me what art is and all shit? Fuck that. You know what I mean? Like, that shit bothers me, like, a lot. You know what I mean? I'm I'm heavy on that shit, like on some like, yo, like little bro and them, like, yo, it's about getting fresh. You know what I mean? It's about getting getting fresh is art. You know what I mean? You make yourself art when you get fresh. You know what I mean? You like designing your cartoon character, you know what I mean? Your avatar, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a form of expression, you know what I mean? It's about creating, you know what I mean? Like, I like turning demolitionists into architects. Mm. You heard? That's my shit. I fuck with that. That's my shit, because breaking shit is easy. But you found your appreciation. Your breaking shit is mad easy, bro. Breaking glass and all that shit, that shit is fun, that shit is easy, but it's hard to build something that's going to be here longer than you. You know what I mean? Yeah. For real, it's hard to take care of your family. It's easy to pull a trigger. Cowards do it all the time. How do you think you find that appreciation, that change of that mindset? Definitely drugs, definitely help. And that's what you mean that you found? Yeah, like, you know how, like, when you take mushrooms and shit, that you start appreciating everything, like, damn, I'm thankful for air, I'm thankful for this water, I'm thankful yeah. for... You start wanting to text people that you... Yeah, like, like, I love you, like, all that yeah. shit. Because I know what love is. Love is the highest form of understanding. And the understanding is to see clearly through the mind's eye. You know what I mean? So... Understanding is the highest form of love to me. Love is the highest form of understanding, I should say. You know what I mean? So, like, it helps me understand things. It helps, like, remove that kind of filter. Yeah. Ego, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? It helps me more, like, clearly observe things, you know? So, like, the same way I would appreciate my hands or appreciate, like, water or some shit or air, I'd appreciate a painting. You know what I mean? Like, damn, like. That painting that I might have thought was corny when I was 13 is now like, this is fucking beautiful. It made me appreciate beauty. You know, that's all that shit is. Art is beauty. And it's like, everything that everything that's pretty ain't beautiful. And everything that's beautiful ain't pretty. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the best way I, I could put it. You know what I mean? When did you like, you realize- know, you know when you meet a bitch and a bitch kind of like, she kind of bugged out, but she's beautiful, but she's not she's not necessarily pretty. Yeah. It's just something about her, you know what I mean? It's like that's the that's how I like art. You know what I mean? Art is like it's all, it's all subjective. Like art is what you make it. Like a crackhead on the corner is art to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you take a good enough film portrait of that shit on a medium format, mama ya or some shit, that shit gonna be a beautiful picture. You know what I mean? Motherfucker smoking rock in front of you. You yeah. know what I mean? It's all perspective. It's all like it's all just how you look at shit. That's what like art is to me is just the lens on life. You know what I mean? I just have an art lens. Like I just I see, I appreciate things that other people don't. When did you realize what you were doing was art? I don't know. I think it was something I just made more of a conscious effort. Like the more I knew, the more I learned about art, the more I implemented it into my craft, into my into my life, you know what I mean? Because it's like, it's not even necessarily that what I do is art. I'm art. I'm art. 
You know what I mean? That was what I realized. The the work I make is just a vicarious, it's like a product of me being art. When I look in the mirror, I see art. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, you know, I'm going to be sculpted in marble one day. What did you see before? Like, before I appreciated art? Before you saw yourself as art, what did you see when you looked in the mirror? The chosen one. You feel me? Yeah. I don't know. See, a, a, a multitude of things, you know what I mean? There's a lot of layers. I remember one time Shorty told me I'm like a deep fried onion. I love you, baby. You know who you are. <laughs> I thought that was deep. It means I got layers, but I'm fried. <laughs> shit was hard. I might marry that girl. Yeah, that shit is hard. That shit. I love you, baby. She came off the, off the dome with that shit? Yeah. Nah, she was probably sitting with a notebook was, trying to come up with that. Nah, it took, it took like, it didn't take years for her to say that about me. It took like a couple months again to know me. Like, oh shit, you really, yo, there's a lot of layers to you, but you fried as fuck, my boy. Yeah. You know? Where did you think you were going to be at where right now? When I was a kid? Yeah. Bro, I'm dead or in jail. Probably. You know? Well, over here, I didn't know if I was going to live to be 28. If it wasn't for this shit, I probably would have crashed out. For real. Playing with high explosives at a young age and shit. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah, shit could have went left. Yeah. But instead of destroying shit, I like to build shit. You know? Yeah. If it wasn't for, like, knowledge of self, you know what I mean? That, that shit was, like, it's cool to be smart. And I don't know when the fuck being smart wasn't cool. You know what I mean? When the fuck it started not being cool or, like, being smart and soft. Like, I never looked at it like that. Like, that's why I like knowledge of self. Like, it'd be a gangster, like, talking to you about knowledge. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it'd be like somebody with, he might still got a foot in the street. He might sell crack. You know what I mean? But just no mad shit. You know what I mean? About self. About self. About history. About philosophy. Psychology. Hood shit. All types of shit. You know? You know I'm a nerd for shit like that. Like, I'm like a fiend for for information. Like, proper information. Because that's what knowledge is. is proper information. You know? And then you got wisdom. The one to the two is the, the wisdom is the proper application of proper knowledge. You know? The, that's why the two can't come before the one. You can't have wisdom without knowledge. You know what I mean? Because they, they like to say like that a wise man knows that he knows nothing at all. I think that's bullshit. Straight like that. Because every wise person I ever met in my life, they know what they know. But what makes them wise is that they know what they don't know. A fool thinks he knows everything. A fool can't even learn from a wise man because he thinks he know it all. Oh, I heard that shit before. I ain't trying to hear that shit. He can't even learn from a wise man because he's so foolish. While wise men will learn everything from a fool, what not to say, what not to do, all that shit. You could watch a fool all day and just learn shit. He put his hand on every stove. You know what I mean? So you don't got it. You know? How did you find that? Knowledge? Yeah. That shit found me. You know, that shit, it's a real, like, um, it's a real prevalent thing in Lynn in particular. You know what I mean? It's not as much of a thing in Boston or or in Lawrence or anywhere else that I've lived in Massachusetts. You know what I mean? So it was really a thing in Lynn because of King Asiatic. You know what I mean? King Asiatic of law. Remembered in perfection, you heard? I'm King Asiatic. You know what I mean? That was the older guy. He was from Medina, which means Brooklyn. And he moved to Lynn about like 16 years ago. He, like, grew up with Dirty and all that. You know what I mean? He, like, a real legend. Like, a real, like, Brooklyn legend. Like, he had arguably the most students in the nation of Gods and Earths. You know what I mean? He he had what we call the magnetic. You know? The magnetic is like the shine. You got this certain shine to you that brings people, to, that attracts people to you. You know? And that shit was, like, the that shit was, like, contagious. You know? Knack was, um his second student in Lynn. His first student was Righteous Ruler. Righteous Ruler used to, um, they cleaned up Cook Street Park in Lynn. They used to have mad needles and all that shit. When I was getting into the knowledge, that was around the time they did the cleanup. Clean the park up, put a guard in there. That's where we're trying to put the mural of King. He passed away last year. Um, Righteous Ruler, the first student, he used to teach Wing Chun in that park for free, like a fucking video game. 
You heard? It's wild. Like, Lynn is just like an interesting, with the knowledge that shit's prevalent for everything from, like, people my age and younger to older. You know what I mean? Or you hear Peace Guard and all that shit. Dominicans that can barely speak English but could tell you today's mathematics and tell you that the black man is God. That shit is a trip. You know what I mean? It's because of him, King Asiatic, we could trace our tree back to where this shit started. There's a man named Clarence 13X. He was in the Nation of Islam. We we refer to him as the father. The interesting thing about the word father, right, is that if you we would we would agree that father is a six letter word, right? So if you were to break that six letter word into two three letter words, what would it be? And I'll give you a hint. Fat her, right? Shit right in front of your face. But what happened when you put the letter R after the A? It turns into farther. So in the knowledge, it's like a, a father is a man that furthers another man's education. You know what I mean? So that man like furthered a lot of us. You know what I mean? By like, t- all, all that shit really was is like learning how to learn. Because once you learn how to learn, then you, then you know how to teach. And I learned more through teaching, like teaching him. I learned more through teaching him than I do learning on my own. Because it tests my knowledge. I got to make my understanding understood to somebody that doesn't know. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, like, the knowledge is real, like, prevalent in them, man. Like, it's a real cultural thing, man. Like, How did it find you? Um, Knack. You know? I went to school with Knack's cousins. The twins. Oh. The Mejos. Yeah. The Mejos. Yeah. We used to skip school and go to Pequot Projects and eat ketchup and mayo sandwiches, you heard? So, like, that's their cousin... So, like, I heard of Knack way before that, though. Like, the Dominican family that I grew up, uh, the household that I grew up in, like, eighth grade and on. The older brother, he used to rap Urge One. Look up Urge One. Like, if you're watching this, look up Urge One. That's one of the illest, like, Lynn legends of all time. Like, this motherfucker shot videos in Dubai and fucking with turbans and fucking... This motherfucker used to... Yo, it's crazy shit, right? So, like... Real dawn shit, like real, real, real dawn shit from selling crack to like multi-millionaire shit, like legal, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, um, yeah, like I heard about Knack first. Yo, yo, chill, bro. You heard? Yeah. So um, I seen Knack's name on the back of a mixtape in 2008. Like they had music videos together. Like, back when Nack had, like, the little dreads, like, the baby dreads and all that shit. That's how I'm saying, like, the family's, like, tied together. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I heard of Nack before, but then when the twins put me on in 2011, that's when me and him linked up type shit. I was already, like, rapping, doing music videos and shit under another name. So, like... What was your first name? I don't like putting that shit out there. Like, it's right. really not that hard to find. Like, if you watch, like, the documentary and shit, you could... You could it shit ain't that hard right, to find. Right. I feel you. I don't know. It's like, I like to like, be like, if you know, you know type shit. So yeah. like, yeah, like, n- like Knack was like, I used to be like the youngest person in the room. You heard? Like, I'll be 17 in a room for like 30 year olds and just shut the fuck up and just listen. You know what I mean? I remember Knack, like one of the first times I really got around Knack, I remember him talking about when he got a headache, he knows exactly like what part of the brain. And sh- it was just a level of self-awareness that I never saw before. So that shit draw, it, it attracted me to it. Like, damn, like this type of like self awareness and like assuredness of yourself. You know what I mean? That I really fucked with. Like it was something. It was like, it, like intellect. You know what I mean? Like, like intelligence is gangster. Yeah. There's nothing gangster about being stupid. Knowledge is power. Yeah. For real. And that's how you found out. What do you mean? That's how you. That's how you. No, That's how I got introduced you. to like the, the like a lost five percent. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's how I got introduced to it by meeting the meeting the gods. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, because like a lot of people be like, you have what's called like a job percent, a uh, job percenter, or like a five pretender. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got a lot of those. Like I don't come from there. I come from the real shit. You know what I mean? Like we could we could really. It's like when a gangbanger is real right. You know what I mean? You ever heard that shit? Yeah. Like when somebody know why they blood or know why they crip, but we not a gang. We not a gang member. We not gang members, you know what I mean? Yeah. We just can trace our sh- our shit back to where this shit started at. We really official like a ref with a whistle, you are so straight like that. You know what I mean? And you need knowledge to create. 
Huh? You need knowledge to create. You need knowledge to even do anything. Yeah. The right way, if you want to do you got to know what you're doing and know what you're talking about. Otherwise, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. You're not going to do nothing. You got to have, you got, you know, knowledge is to look, listen, observe, and most importantly, respect. It's to do the knowledge, like like a verb. You know what I mean? So knowledge is, knowledge is the foundation of all existence. Like, it's like acknowledging, like knowledge, acknowledge. You know what I mean? If I don't acknowledge something, it doesn't exist to me. You might see it, but I don't see it. It's like you got roaches, but you don't haven't seen a roach yet. That shit doesn't exist to you until that shit motherfucker pop up in your Captain Crunch. Yeah. Now you got roaches. <laughs> you heard like you gotta uh, be prepared for situations. Exactly. Exactly. It's like keeping keeping one in the chamber. You heard it's like. It's crazy that we do full circle, but that's literally what I was talking about in the beginning. Absolutely, literally. Like you gotta stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready, you heard? Yeah. Straight like that. For everything. Everything. You gotta prepare for the situation. You gotta be ready to throw somebody down the stairs, light somebody on fire. And I don't you know. Gotta if be you... ready to fuck shorty in like a like a public place. <laughs> you gotta stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready. That's why I keep a condom in my sock at all times. <laughs> in your sock. <laughs> I just pray. <laughs> I just pray is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I be praying too. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I ain't religious or nothing, but that's one of those things that make you pray. See, that's some real shit, though. Like, I wasn't taught really nothing growing up about like really taking care of myself or really like. Me neither. My mother barely drank water. She like fucking boots up Diet Coke in her fucking ankle. No, nah, I'm the same with everything. So I really did have to be like, all right, I need to f- learn how to learn. Right. Because, like, if, you, if you're if you around people who don't know nothing, you think that knowing nothing is everything. Elaborate. Like, you're only, your capacity is only as big as it, as it is at the time. So, like, if you're around, what do they say? AA posted this shit. You are a combination of the five people you spend the most time with. If that's not the realest shit I've ever heard in my life, come on, bro. And when you're a kid, you're just spending time with everyone you have to. And if they're not doing nothing, then how are you going to learn? Like, you have to learn how to learn on your own when you get out into the world. You're kicking with broke time. people all day. You're going to be the next broke person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if they're all fucking stupid, you're going to be stupid too. Yeah. That's exactly. So, this is something I like to talk about. Everybody be talking about they all what, like, you all what you eat, right? Everybody talk about that shit, right? But what nobody seems to talk about is that you are who you eat with. Science has proven that if you eat with somebody on a regular basis for lo- prolonged periods of time, they'll start to look alike. They'll start to carry the same mannerisms. That's why people think I'm Dominican. I mean, I'm not Dominican. People be thinking I'm all types of shit. On the internet, people think I'm Moroccan, this, Colombian, all types of shit. You know what I mean? But like who you eat with, Y'all start to share the same mannerisms and all that shit. Y'all might make the same faces and all that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's science. You know what I mean? That if you eat with somebody on a regular basis, you are who you eat with. Is that why you don't listen to, like, rap rap music as much? What you mean? Because you, you are what you consume, too. Like, Bro, I just spent, yo, bro, I listen to more rap than anybody you know. Like, in my life. So it's like, I just... I just oh. You're done with it. Yeah, bro. It's like eating the same food every day. You know what I mean? I got to eat, eat some other shit. Nah, I feel you. You know? It's like, how many times... It's like when I got sick of oatmeal and, like, Pop-Tarts and shit as a kid. Like, but I ate like, that shit every single day. And then it's just one day, you're just done with it. It's like, nah. But they say, like... Like, Ilios and pizza rolls and nah, shit. I feel you. Attention is the universal currency. That's the only thing that's yours. So like you have That's to what pay AA attention. Say. AA said that atten- your attention is the only thing that actually belongs to you. Some of your thoughts ain't even yours. Mm. Subconscious thoughts. You're not even conscious of the thought that you're having. That's what subconscious means. So that's the, you know you know that's not coming from you. That's not coming from your conscious mind. It's coming from your subconscious mind. So it's arguably to say that not all your thoughts are yours. So not even your thoughts are yours. 100%. Attention is the only attention thing. is the only thing that, that is blew yours. my mind right there. So you got you got to be careful what you pay attention to. Like that's why I say ain't no free game. You got to pay attention. 
That's why it's so easy to waste yeah. time. That's why you can go on fuck it. People on Instagram. Ain't no free game. You got to pay attention first. Mm. You know? Yeah. For real. For real, for real. Spitting facts on this in your fucking Prada glasses. You know? Y'all don't mean y'all You know my bop, man. <laughs> Word. I feel like it's important. Like, I don't really do interviews, bro. I really don't. I did like Tyrone shit. I did my man Sweet Dog from Philly shit. He's just such a, like a genuine fan of my shit. Like I just did his shit. Yeah. He buying vinyls and now shit. He's a good dude. You know Sweet Dog, yeah, right? He's a he's, good dude. Yeah. I'll be telling him he need to get on some like real like you know some real podcast shit. Like do videos and shit. Yeah. I really feel like he could he could really like he could do it. That shit ended up being a two hour interview. You know what I mean? Other than that, I, I did like one more. It was like Southern Vanguard. Other than that, nah, I don't do and the Harvard shit. But like, other than that, I don't do interviews, bro. That's like over my whole career. I probably did like five interviews. Turn them shits down all the time. Because a lot of motherfuckers just be whack as shit. They just want you to get their platform lit. They don't even really know your music. You know what I mean? And they just, they, it's just corny. It's like, so, how'd you get into rap music, man? Da, 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 da. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, shit is corny. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just be all the same. It's just redundant. You know what I mean? That's why I like this. This shit is lit. This is like, it's like kicking it with Davino. <laughs> Little, It's just, I'm yeah. prepared. I'm you're all, you're prepared. in my living room just kicking it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I'm high as hell. <laughs> Fucking, yeah. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever got? Oof. That's a hard question. I got to, like, really think. I might got to come back to that question. All right. What's your proudest moment in life? <sighs> That's hard, too. Um, I like giving my mom money. I respect that. I mean, yeah, like handing my mom like a considerable amount of cash like, in her hand was a dope feeling. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't, I don't know if anything's better than that. Yeah, support. No bitches, no like rap accolades. Like, nah, bro. Like, giving my mom money when she would give me her last fucking five dollars. You know, because you proved that she raised you well and right, and that you were. I able turned to out all right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Bottom line. No know. matter what you went through, you turned like, out. She right. raised me. I raised myself. You know what I mean. So, knowing that he came out of I, right, like even though shit wasn't all peaches and fucking cream. You know what I mean. Even though you didn't know how to learn, you learned. You gotta learn how to. Like, you know, it, learning how to learn is like there's layers of learning how to learn. Like it's like degrees. Like everybody knows how to learn. Motherfuckers learn. I motherfucker, I learn how to read without phonics. I know how to learn, but like, it's learn really, really learning how to learn so you could teach. I'm a teacher. I teach. I I don't argue. I either teach or I learn. I got that from A. Rashid. He said that shit. I was like, that is the illest shit in the world. I'm not because the f- most foolish thing that you can do is argue with somebody, whether it's a shorty or a dude or what your mother, whatever. Arguing does nothing for no one. It's a pissing contest. That shit is nothing. That shit ain't nothing. It's stupid. It's immature shit. It's what we do when we kids. We argue. We fucking bicker and all that shit. Some people never grow out of that. I either teach or I learn. If I'm not doing one or the other, then what the fuck am I doing? You know? Yeah. I like teaching. I like that shit. I like teaching, like, whether it's somebody my age or somebody younger than me, you feel me? That's like, I I, I get a lot out of it. You know what I mean? I get out of, I get a lot out of giving knowledge to somebody. You know what I mean? What's your best form of doing that? Shown and proven. Like, yeah, I could tell you, but I could show you a lot better. Like, look at how I live. Like, look at how I move. Like, and see how it lines up with what I'll be telling you. You know? Because that's the thing is with the young, they they, they want to see you first. You know what I mean? They want to, they got to see you. You know what I mean? They got to like what they see. Like, yo, this motherfucker, get, this motherfucker get money. This motherfucker get bitches. Like, he get fresh. Ah, right, let me hear what you talking about. 
I met him when he was 14. I told him about eat, not eating pork and all that shit. I told him about pigs. He ain't never ate pork after that. He got damn near, he got a whole bunch of friends that was older than him stopped eating pork because of him. You know what I mean? You see how that happened? You know what I mean? Not like years later, we on it, for real. You know what I mean? But it's like, that's a great example. You know what I mean? Or like, seeing him uh, like a couple years later and he still ain't ate pork again. You know what I mean? That's like, that's, that's the type of shit I love. Like, it's like, the little things. You know what I mean? That's the most important. Not the accolades, because those you Fuck just... Fuck all that. All them shits is like, you be high. What, you you be high off that shit, and then that shit... For 10 minutes. And then it's gone, For bro. 10 minutes, it's and then you're gone. like, oh like, shit, the I got it. The illest shit that you thought you you would wanted to do when you was a kid, that shit's gone. Bro, minutes. can I tell you, like, the, not the... Bro, this sounds so fucked, but, like, after doing the West interview, it was kind of like... I was high as shit. I kept interrupting that shit. <laughs> that was fun as hell. Fucking Dizzle was kicking my ass, bro. <laughs> you know what I that shit was, was busting my head open. That was a fun ass night, though. Like, yo, tell him about the comic book. I was, oh, <laughs> shit, I'm a fucking asshole. <laughs> he looked at you so mad. He looked at me he crazy. He looked at you so mad. That's my man, though. That's my man, though. <laughs> I feel like I could get that shit off. Like, if anybody could get that shit off, it was me. It was, but that was a moment. But it was like that's amazing. My but bad, that's... gun. My bad, yo. My bad for you know. You think guns listen in two hours and three minutes? Hell no. Hell no. But somebody might see this and then tell him like, yo, oh, fast forward to that. Yo, point. fast forward. Nah, but he know, like later on he found out I was high off a of thizzle. You heard? Well, you were saying nah, you were. Nah, when I said, <laughs> you I said, said you were in the he studio. Was, nah, he was talking about, yeah, when we was in the studio, you remember he was like, he was talking about premiering the Rome shit, the Rome movie. Yeah. I was like, I, what did I say? I said, uh, Gun Dance Film Festival. Yeah. <laughs> the whole fucking room lit up. I was like, yo. He Gun was like, whatever dance. drugs you doing, keep doing them shits, yo. <laughs> so I guess it worked out. <laughs> it did work out. Yo, that was hilarious. <laughs> that was nuts, right? That yeah. shit was crazy. That was a good fucking night, man. That was a good night. But that's what I mean. That was such an amazing thing, but it's not like... It's work, so you just got to be like, what? what's next? It's like if you are a surgeon and you save someone's life, you don't get to go out and celebrate that because you got to go save someone's life. You look like a dickhead. Day. Literally, you're doing shots in the like, Yo, why you tell? Why are you celebrating? Y'all save somebody's life. Dude, skiing. Even though you probably, you probably should be fucking celebrating that That's shit. That's what I mean. Motherfuckers they... be celebrating nothing. Yeah, Motherfuckers bro. be getting drunk for nothing. For $100. Girl. Not for nothing, like, yo. Motherfuckers ain't got shit to celebrate and just be getting drunk as fuck. <laughs> yeah, they, like, bro, you are. Uh, you should drink some water. But surgeons like, should be partying. But you know what I mean? Like, you, they don't celebrate that shit because it just works. But it's hard to see, like... I bet surgeons be sniffing coke and shit. Oh, 100%. Off the bodies. <laughs> you say that's kinky. You a wild motherfucker, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, just sniffing, sniffing yip off the fucking off a carcass. Uh, yo. Jesus Christ! On some triple D. Bro, you know how fucking <laughs> Doing bugged out. You know how bugged out you gotta be to be a mortician and shit, bro. Like they should run mental health shits on them. Yeah, you'd be like, yo. What you really doing in there, But that's my boy? like if you're the coach of a little league. For real, you what got you really kid? doing with all them why dead you bodies and li- shit? Why are you coaching little league if you don't have a kid in that league? They need to test those dudes. You got that. You got that, yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? This don't matter. Why are you? Coaches are weird as shit. Coaches are weird as hell. Like, baseball coaches that be like, we already know. <laughs> we don't even need to do the bit. Yeah. It's already there. That's already understood. Like, you understand why they're weird. They're just weird. Yeah. Got the shades on and shit. Nah, you see, like, the 60-year-old dude in the club? I'm, I might be the 60 year old doing the club. <laughs> off, a dizzle, I'm fresh. off the dizzle. I'm going to be mad fresh. When I'm 60, hell yeah. I'll pop a dizzle. I'll pop a dizzle at 60. I'll probably smoke dust when I'm like 75. Smoke dust for the first time. Uh, like, what's, what's this about? What was Ghostface fucking with this? Yeah. <laughs> Get on my Method Man shit. I would totally work with Method Man if he, sm- if he smoked dust again. <laughs> would you smoke dust with Method Man? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. If he was like, I'll do, I'll do the verse with you, but you got to take my shirt off. You gotta <laughs> start doing push-ups. <laughs> Try to sweat that shit out. Yo, you do. Yeah. 
For real. <laughs> You're gonna be 60 in the club? I might be 60 in the club. Trying doing... to pull young bitches? Nah, like, nah, they're gonna be pulling me. You are? <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be pulling your wheelchair out the yeah. door. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I don't even gotta stand up in the club. <laughs> they're giving you lap dance. My legs still them. work. It's just more comfortable. Like, <laughs> you know, when you're in the club and you ain't got no place to seat? Oh, yeah. Not me. <laughs> Not me. You got the wheelchair you on the see club. See me rolling. <laughs> oh. Hell yeah. What? Yo, you know I got... Yeah, this is a crazy story, but we're far enough into this. The first time I went to Brighton Music Hall, uh -huh. I saw Riff Raff. Oh, that's great. That's and a, wild. And a chick jerked me off on the dance floor. I believe it. I believe it. I've heard like... During a Riff Raff I know concert. bitches that got... Yo, bro, I know, I know a couple bitches that got Riff Raff stories, bro. You heard? I know a couple bitches with Riff Raff stories. I told stories. that to Rome right as he got on stage, and he's like, why the fuck are you telling me this? Yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck was you telling him that? That's crazy. That would be hilarious. That's I do nuts. it for the bit, bro. Half of what I do is for the bit. You know what I mean? Like everything I, just want... I do is for the bit chiz. <laughs> All right, chill. <laughs> All right, chill. <laughs> I just like crazy stories. Like I just want to have a bunch of crazy stories. Professional at the end of the RHL day. players in a fucking building. <laughs> I want to know what job you made a bitch quick <laughs> quit. Oh, what job Frankie, tell him. He had Olive Garden. Yeah, bro. He had his you know. his his bitch bought him a phone. He threw that shit at the, at the floor, and then she bought him another one. <laughs> like recently, this motherfucker's a legend. Wait, was it an iPhone fourteen? Yeah. <laughs> that shit ain't watching this shit. <laughs> Not two and a half hours she in. Ain't watching this whole shit, bro. I love all my bitches equally. They should know that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like bitches with loose screws and daddy issues. Loose screws and tight pussy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> loose screws Boom. and tight. Shabuya. Yeah. Shabuya. I don't know. That's just how I feel. That shit came right from the heart. <laughs> Isn't that a city in Japan? Shabuya? Shabuya, yeah. I, th I think that's what... I'm about to name my firstborn child Shabuya. <laughs> After a city in Japan? Better be half Japanese. I feel like that's like a unisex name, too. Like, it could be a boy or a girl. Shabuya. I Call him Shasha for short. Shasha. <laughs> What about Boo Boo? <laughs> Boo Boo is crazy. I think that was 50, I think that was Fifty Cent's like hood name, like before Fifty Boo Boo? Cent. I swear to God, I swear to God, like ask Tony Yayo. <laughs> Let me call Both him. His name Boo Boo, but he'll just fucking rob the shit out you. Watch out for Boo Boo, man. Doesn't Danny have an album with Tony Yayo? Who do you mean Danny Brown got an album with Tony Yayo? I think they do. You're Bruiser Brigade. You should know shit like this. I don't know facts like that. <laughs> I am Bruiser Brigade, which is pretty dope. Danny Brown, see. Fucking lean tastes so good. The first day I met him, we took mushrooms. How was that? Y'all got weird? <laughs> yeah. Y'all got, got weird together? <laughs> he took his shoes off and had a dance fight with a homeless man. Are you street. serious? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Danny Brown lick up, yo. He's fucking hilarious. <laughs> he took his shoes off and dance battled a homeless person? <laughs> yeah. This is the type of shit I talk about doing figuratively. On Thanksgiving. Like, figuratively, <laughs> I do it in my mind, but I never do it in real life. Like, he really did that shit in real life. Nah, he really did that in real life, bro. Yeah. You got it on video? I think I do. I'll show, show you later. later. Show me later. Yeah, show me uh, later. I have him and, yeah. <laughs> we've done, we've gotten pretty crazy. I did DMT at one of his shows, and he did and went up oh, on stage. Oh, I'm not stage. doing DMT in public. See, I hated it. It was that was wild. Hey, you're I bugging out, like beloved. That. You're bugging. Man. I did not like DMT in public. That should sound like Kirby enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I used to watch that shit with my mom as a kid and all that shit. That's a great show. Fucking amazing shit, bro. That's a great show. This was I'm a like fun Larry podcast. David. I relate. I relate to Larry David a lot. I'm gonna look like Larry David in like ten years. My I hair. hope I don't look like Larry David. My hairline's going back. He looked like a bald eagle or like a snapping turtle with no shell. He does look like a snapping turtle. I relate to him. He be in a club with headphones on and shit. Mm, 60 years old. He be falling asleep at like like sports games and shit. 
Like, damn, bro, you that bored? Yeah. Like, are you I, that old? I do that too. He's I a, love using Larry David for like gifts, like memes and shit. Larry David's probably sipping. Like whenever, 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 whenever a bitch like post a fat ass, I'd like do the the gif for like him like fainting. Oh, uh, it's great. Nah, it's great. he's probably just a sipping courtside falling asleep. I wonder if that, Larry David probably wouldn't like me. I feel like he doesn't like anybody. Nah, he probably don't like anybody. I don't even think he likes himself. Definitely not. That's the comedian thing. Isn't it crazy that like the person that made. Seinfeld made a show about him being a narcissist. Yeah. And then, like, the world just had to conform to his narcissism. I don't even like Seinfeld. I don't like Seinfeld either. I'm glad not we a, Not a that. fan of Jerry Seinfeld. I don't like his face. What's your top three favorite comedians? Dave Chappelle, one. Um, Martin Lawrence, yeah. I love I love like old Martin Lawrence, bro. That was like the shit. Like Martin stand up. I got like uh oh you so crazy. I got the VHS and shit. Oh shit. Yeah, bro. I got y'all got the crazy. You got VHS. hella VHS. I got mad shit, bro. Are those Pokemon. Yeah, bro. I you got, got hella Pokemon. Bro, VHS, none of those bro. are from my childhood. Those are all from the last couple of years. I've and like I only got a couple of them on eBay. Like those are all shits I got in person. But um, third favorite comedian. I really want to give you, like, the real shit. So I'm like, damn. No, take your time. I'm like, damn. Like, who have I, like, watched the most of? Dane Cook. Now I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Dane Cook fucking sucks. I don't know. Bill Burr is pretty funny, bro. Bill Burr is. I fuck, I fuck with Bill Burr, but I don't know if he's three. I think he's, like, five. Who's the third? The 30, 30. Um, I would imagine people would think I would say like Eddie Murphy. Like Eddie Murphy's like Nack's favorite comedian. But like, I like Charlie Murphy more. I like Charlie Murphy more too. I'm probably going to go with Charlie. That's dope. He had this... um. I watched all his shit before he passed. Like, that was the weird shit. I, like, got into his shit before he passed. Bro, he got crazy. You ever seen the shit where he's, like, he did this, like, skit on his own about, like, he's, like, Leroy Smith, and he's, like, the guy that, like, taught Michael Jordan how to play basketball? No. Bro, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. He got, like, an African, like, making, like, sweatbands and, like, a <laughs> shit, is, shit is crazy as fuck. Like He's just a great, he has so many crazy And the dude stories. doesn't exist. He's like, yo, he tries to say that Michael Jordan used to, like, imitate him. Like, <laughs> he would, like, impersonate him. He would go everywhere and, like, check in as Leroy Smith. and like. I'm going to have to check that he out. Com- he compared Michael Jordan to, like, a, him. Was He was, like, a bird feeding a baby bird his food. <laughs> Shit was nuts. Motherfucker never opened his teeth, like, ever. Like, he would just fuck like this. He was, like, still high from the 80s, like, fucking with Rick James and shit. I'm Rick James, bitch. So, you ever hear of Nick's comedy stop in Boston? It sounds familiar. I've never been to, like, a real comedy show, though. It's where Bill Burr started. And, like, Louis, whatever. Just a bunch of, like, Patrice. Like... Oh, shout out... Yo, shout out Coco, uh, Joey Diaz. Shout out Joey Diaz. I love Joey Diaz. He's somebody I really want to kick it with. I feel like me and him will have a blast. I've met I've met him a few times. He's a good dude. I'm trying to get him to relapse with me. <laughs> You're trying to go skiing with Joey? Yeah, it's not. It's out of my nose. <laughs> I couldn't even contain myself. Like, That's how excited you got over Yeah, it. she was hilarious. I, but, just, I just pictured myself like fucking with prostitutes with Joey Diaz. Like, yo. <laughs> I'm Yo, he- let's go get some hookers. I'm headlining Nick's Comedy Stop April 28th to 29th. Yeah. Let me Millie Rock on your set. <laughs> During my whole set. Let me do a robot. Yeah. <laughs> do a robot like, uh, what's his name from the uh, Chappelle show? Oh, um. The dude that's always doing the robot. Yeah, a fucking Donnell Rollins. Donnell Rollins, yo. Donnell Rollins is mad funny, too. He's fucking hilarious. He is mad funny. But he come out and out. see me at Nick's Comedy I'm stuff. definitely there. You that's said where, April? Yeah, April yeah, 28th, 29th. That's I where definitely want to see that. That's where Bill Burr started. All I definitely want to see that. This, yeah. might, this might be your time. It'll be dope. It's your moment. I'll let you Millie Rock turn the whole set. It might, it, might, it might be your Brighton Music Hall. It might be your best, <laughs> your best 
shit yet. And I'm, I'm, had- I'm going to give you some ecstasy before you go up there. <laughs> I can't give you the Air Max 95, but I might give you like. I've only taken the Air Max. 95. I got a Walter White. I got a Walter White with shades and a hat on. <laughs> okay, all right. Like the Heisenberg, Heisenberg yeah. The like Heisenberg? the Heisenberg. It's not Walter. It's Heisenberg. It's the Heisenberg. Right? Yeah. Do you have the Heisenberg the balloon? Nah, it's red. <laughs> it's red. All right, I'm calling it. We're two and a yeah. half hours yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's like, like beating a dead hooker at this point. I mean. That's what I'm about to go do after this. <laughs> it Put shows up. lit, though. No Thank you for doing this, for real. I don't, I don't want to fuck up your drink. Thank you for doing this. Everyone can know whenever. Peace yeah. out, everyone. Do you want to plug anything? Shit. Saying Buck Bucked Up Podcast. We in this bitch live as fuck. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Always us, never that, man. Big say so. Checking out this bitch. <laughs> you already up. know, man. We out. I got a um. I got a beatbox bachata album coming out <laughs> in May. You on the lookout? You on the lookout? It's called Balenciaga Chancletas. <laughs> Even though they canceled, whatever. It sounds good. <laughs> You're still releasing the project. We out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah